Hi guys, it's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And I hope that you guys are all in good spirits and I hope that you are doing your part by staying home so that we can get back to our regular lives as soon as possible. God, come on. What's taking so long? He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. What time is it? I mean, what time is it? What time? All this time at home has given me an opportunity to try a lot more new things with you guys, my loyal binge watchers. And I'm happy to say that for the month of March, I have made more videos than I've made in the last six months. <laughs> yes, as a content creator, these stay at home orders have created so many opportunities for us all to connect through some really good content. And I've started doing live shows, I've been kicking out longer edited videos, and I've even dabbled with premieres like the one that you're watching right now. So today, I've taken a page out of Bravo's book and decided to do my very own Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12 Binge Worthy Marathon Special here on my channel and I'll be watching almost all of my videos that I've made so far about the Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12 all over again here with you guys. Sipping on my tangerine just water and eating all my quarantine snacks here with you guys. And I know that a lot of y'all have probably already seen a lot of these videos, but we get brand new binge watchers every single day. And this month alone, we've welcomed more than 10,000 new binge watchers to the family. So join me in the chat and let's chill out for a couple of hours together. My very first Real Housewives of Atlanta binge worthy marathon starts now. Kenya Moore is talking mess about her co-star, Nene. Here's what I think the problem is. Kenya has been a star on the show since she first got on the show. Kenya wants that Nene money. Now, Nene is the queen of the franchise, but I don't know, Nene. It's been quite some time since Kenya fans have seen their queen on television, but you can rest assured that she's coming back hotter than ever for season 12. And if you think that she's had her hands too full with her new baby and her recent divorce, you better think again because she still has time to throw shade at Nene Leaks. And I think she's coming for the crown. Um, I don't take any kind of advice from Nene. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Definitely not about wig. It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And today, let's talk about the latest news out of Atlanta about our Real Housewives and why I am personally getting a little anxiety about Nene's suspect friendship with Wendy Williams. I personally have no problem with Kenya. Like if Kenya were to call me, I could be as friendly with her. Look, I'm not that invested. Please, I'm on nobody's payroll, okay? Now, it is no surprise that Nene and Kenya are not getting along these days. And if you watch the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12 trailer, you already know what I'm talking about. Where is security? Can this get out of the room? Please, no, 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 Call the police. According to sources close to the Atlanta Housewives, these two fan favorites have been at odds during much of this new season of filming. And the real reason why I'm a little shook about it is because we all watched Nene Leaks in season 12 in the worst way. Isolated, lonely, cheated on, and <laughs> just all the way broke down. And worst of all, it really didn't look like she had any real friends left besides Marlo. First thing I saw was I unfollowed half of my cast. That's what the blogs have said, and they are correct. Y'all want to fire at me on this coin? I know I'm the one. Honestly, things got so bad for Nene Leaks that I was so worried that Bravo was gonna finally be forced to finesse a peach for Marlo Hampton, or I felt like it was time for them to finally reveal that card that they've been keeping in their back pocket. I'm talking about Phaedra Park, y'all. I thought that they were gonna have Nene so isolated that they were gonna have to bring Phaedra back to make it make sense. Nene, if you were gonna bring back one of the Atlanta housewife, who would you say, I would love to have them back? I would love to have Phaedra back. But allegedly after Phaedra started running her mouth at Andy's baby shower to the wrong girls, Andy put a stop to Nene's campaigning to hashtag bring Faye Faye back. Yeah, I was shook y'all. I really felt like it was finally happening, but my source said that whatever Phaedra was saying in these streets really pissed Andy Cohen off and 
while you sitting there with your face all balled up, thinking I'm making this tea up. Have you seen Nini and Phaedra together ever since that baby shower? Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. Right. Hashtag stay woke. The tea is exceptionally good today. <laughs> Who made this? Mm, mm, very delicious. Mm. Anyways, that's none of my business, but we about to get into some things. I first got wind of these rumors about a major blow up between Kenya and Nini when I caught a piece of this interview that Kenya did with TMZ the other day. The new season of Housewives, sure. lots of drama between you and Nini. Uh, I guess people's true colors just, you know, had to come out at some point. I was surprised that Kenya had so much to say to this reporter. It is definitely an issue that's within her. I don't know why she's so intimidated by me, but um, I really just wish she would get herself together. So listen, so you got a couple people that's jumping on her bandwagon. You got Eva, you've got Marlo. Like No, Eva's on, me, Eva's on my bandwagon. Really? She's actually coming today. You know, Nene has very few friends on this show, real friends. What do you say to those women who try to give you advice about when you and your relationship? Um, I don't take any kind of advice from Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Definitely not about wigs. Hold on. But I'm not mad because I think that it's the same reason that Nini gave Wendy that moment a few weeks ago on her talk show when Nini was asked about Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore. Who's what that you, now? Oh. Yeah, we're at that point where anything that comes out in the next few weeks about our girls is really just going to be press for the show, but I'm here for it. On Friday's episode of The Wendy Williams Show, the talk show queen opened the show dishing about Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12, making it clear that although she's been out here smiling in Nene's face, she's still that same old messy on Wendy. You know, I've made some friends and they're in my telephone. And I tried to call Nene to find out what she had to say about this. So Nene, you didn't answer. Anyway, I personally have no problem with Kenya. Like if Kenya were to call me, I could be as friendly with her. Look, I'm not that invested. Please, I'm on nobody's payroll, okay? I go out when I want, I say what I want, I check in with people to get, you know, their proper answers. I don't know, Nene. I mean, how do y'all feel about this? I, for one, am a little nervous because I know that Nene seems really, really invested in a friendship here with Wendy, but I don't want them to end up fighting all over again because of mess like this. Yeah, it's still hard for me to fill Wendy out, but hey, I don't think there's anything wrong with securing the bag and using these celebrities while you do it. Y'all comment below and let me know, do you guys feel like Wendy is trying to have a genuine friendship with Nene Leakes or if she just using her for clout? Later during the day, I caught wind of a Radar Online exclusive that was full of piping hot tea that gave us juicy details about Nene Leakes ripping into Kenya Moore over her divorce in a brutal confrontation that was caught on the Bravo cameras. In that article, Radar is alleging that Nene and Kenya got into a huge disagreement where Nene called Kenya the thirstiest person she ever met. After Kenya started talking about her divorce, from Mark Daly. Yeah, things got pretty bad with Nene allegedly going for the low blow saying, how are you divorcing a man that you didn't even marry? Oh. Have you ever been shook it? Have you ever been shook it? You know, it's hard to shake me, right? It's real hard to shake me. But today, after watching all of that, I am shook it. <laughs> now, I know that y'all are so over me for giving Nene Leaks the side eye, but I feel like Nene, girl, if you really all that happy in your marriage and if the Lord is blessing you every day and you got your edges and you are so fulfilled in life, why are you bringing so much negativity and drama to Kenya Moore? Like, if her marriage is a scam and a scheme, let her live her best life and stop trying to expose her in front of these cameras. <laughs> I remember when Nene was being petty from the beginning, when she was so suspicious of Kenya's marriage and she was throwing shade at Kenya for not even telling us his name. I'm married now! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Kenya, 
Okay, okay, I'm gonna hug, but I wanna know. Yeah. Okay, do we get to like say his real name? Do we have to keep saying baby? Call him baby. Nene's nosy. Yes, she did cut off half her nose, but the one that's still left is quite big. That's nosy Nene. <laughs> Radar sources are saying that Nini really went in drilling Kenya so bad that Cynthia stepped in to defend Kenya and that made Nini mad all over again. And they're saying that Nini apparently feels like now that Kenya and Mark are splitting up, Kenya is just being so thirsty about it. It's hard for me because I personally understand that we need both Nini and Kenya to make this show binge worthy, but for the life of me, after all this time, I really just can't understand what the real issue between these two are. So I turned to my binge watchers and asked you guys to chime in and y'all kept it all the way real saying, Nini is pressed over Kenya's returning. She also said Kenya was talking junk about her in the media dot dot dot, which I highly doubt. As much as I like Nini, she's changed and for the worst. But we'll see what happens this season. Before another fan commented saying, if I have a penny for each time Nini is bothered by Kenya, I would be so rich. <laughs> Before Leslie commented saying, I believe Nini feels that Kenya made up a fake beef between her and Kenya in order to get back on the show with the help of Nini good friend, Cynthia Bailey. And now Nini thinks Kenya back on the show with another fake storyline. Mark Daly exclamation point. Before another fan responded, it's because Nini never expected the delusional goofy girl from Detroit to come through and shake up the show. That's why her hateration has grown for Kenya throughout the seasons. Everyone's pumped about Kenya's return and she hates it in all caps. And then Boss Lady chimed in saying, I don't think Nini is threatened by Kenya taking her spot dot 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 dot. She's just jealous of beautiful women. Dot, dot, dot. Some people have to work for it. Dot, dot, dot. Some don't. Dot, dot, dot. Kenya's gorgeous. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> what you trying to say, sis? I'm just gonna move right along. And Miss Jackie commented is saying, maybe Kenya is the one with the problem with Nini. Have not heard anything negative from Nini about Kenya. And Kenya is trying to keep that peach. And the last comment that I have to agree with, someone said, I love them both. I wish they could just let go of the drama and just tolerate each other with the eye roll emoji. Yeah, it's clear that the jury is still out and I don't know what is the reason that Nini and Kenya just seem to hate each other. All I know is I'm gonna have my behind glued to the TV when The Real Housewives of Atlanta returns November 3rd at 8 p.m. for season 12. And I'll be right here keeping the conversation going. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Y'all know that I could sit here all day talking to y'all about Housewives, but I feel like I just need to calm down and wait for November 3rd and stop using up y'all data. Cut the cameras. Dead end. <laughs> if you like my kind of crazy, definitely follow me on Instagram at Justin Diego and comment with a purple heart emoji and I will definitely know you're a binge watcher and I'll send you back some love. It's Justin Diego back with another binge-worthy video. And today, let's talk about how we need to go ahead and organize a trip to rescue Portia and baby PJ from her house because even after all this Real Housewives of Atlanta drama, the streets are still saying that Dennis is out here all times of the night with not one, not two, but four whole side chicks, y'all. And they've got the receipts. I was gonna say something else, but I'm gonna clamp my tongue. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna move right along. 
you've been watching The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12, you already know that secrets have been spilled and betrayals have been made. But, you know, I made a mistake. I cheated. And it's not a mistake. And when it comes to Portia Williams, a lot of us did not think that there was any hope left. But as the season progressed, we've watched Dennis own up to his mistakes and really do what it takes to start building our trust in him again. And yes, I did say our trust because any man of our housewives is a man of ours. Wake the f up. Wake up. Wake that ass up. Speaking of men being for everybody, I woke up to a DM from a binge watcher that left me giving Radar Online the side eye. To understand why this video is messy, you definitely have to understand the demise of Portia's relationship in context, which I feel like you guys already do. Basically, the thing that bothers me the most about this video is that it was allegedly taken around 4 o'clock in the morning, and Radar Online is saying that their source says that Portia was nowhere to be seen. Now, looking at the footage, I feel like there technically isn't anything particularly off the chain, and I'm definitely happy to report that it seems like everyone is keeping their hands to themselves and no one is sitting on his lap or anything, so that's good. Because, yeah, y'all already know that I be sitting over here looking stupid because I be so delusional, hoping and wishing for the best in the worst situations with these girls because at the end of the day, I want what our girls want, and it's clear to me that Portia definitely wants Dennis. But just as soon as I closed out of this article and I had wrapped my head around the fact that this was a scheme that Todd set up, and I was like, mm, this ain't real, this ain't no true tea, ain't nobody even talking about it, I got a notification that Portia had done posted this story on the gram, y'all saying, hey sis, narcissists play the victim all the time, dot dot dot, don't fall for it, period. <laughs> and even when I saw this, I was just like, well, <laughs> this could be about Dennis, but let me go ahead and have some morning coffee because I'm honest with myself and I know that I still be reaching. Then, just like clockwork, a couple minutes later, Portia followed up with this post saying, Nothing will stop my happy 2020 exclamation point. Hashtag self care. And I was like, Okay, sis, let me rally in the troops. Yeah, at this point, it's pretty clear to me that something is bothering Portia. And I can't help but give Dennis the side eye because in The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 7, he pulled up on us at therapy and started acting like he was genuinely looking to change his ways and he was going to be out here living his best life considering our black queen Portia. But we couldn't even make it in week two of 2020 before Dennis is already back on his bullshit. What the hell we gonna do now? All I'm saying is literally a couple of days ago, Portia was using hashtag wifey on the gram. And these two just went on a whole vacation to Jamaica with Tanya and her boo. This cannot be what he does the day after coming back from a trip like that. My thing is, even if he ain't back to his questionable ways, I think that one of Portia's biggest things about this whole situation with him is she just wants him to use his brain and just be smart. At the end of the day, Portia is a public figure, and even if this was an innocent after the club night with some girls, I ain't smashing because I think about Portia all day and would never do no mess like that ever, ever, ever again. Dinner? It just looks bad, and it just gets annoying. This news really couldn't come at a worse time because Sunday night's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta has already teased that Dennis is getting back down on bended knee and I was one of those people who thought that he was actually going to do right. But it looks like we just gonna have to wait and see. Thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way till the end. Show me some love by liking this video. And of course, be sure to subscribe right now to binge worthy so that you never miss another awesome video. Next time on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs>
Snakes at the mother group, okay? I'm about to turn a Samuel Jackson on y'all ass. Have you heard a uh, recording, Nene? First of all, I don't think anybody recorded you and I said that to Candy several times. What? Chill out, chill out. Chill out. Chill out. Remember, this is a serious situation, okay, for me. I don't want the girls to think that I just made up some bullshit. <laughs> a recording is something very different than audio, right? Why doesn't Nene just simply say, who told her about the recording? You know what? I'm not a snitch. Nene, you know there is no recording. So however you want to call it, a recording, audio, bitch, you are lying. She made the entire thing up in an effort to make everyone believe that Cynthia is such a bad person. You cannot be for real. Oh my God, be for real. It's Justin Diego back with another binge-worthy video. And today, situations like these are exactly why I started this channel. This episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta was off the chain. And although our girls were acting full-blown ghetto and childish all the way in Toronto, we loved every second of it. Now, before we get into some things, like this video and slam that subscribe button right now so you're officially part of the squad and get notifications about more binge-worthy videos like this one. If you've been watching this season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, you are probably fed up with all this talk about the sleazy snake who recorded Cynthia reading her estranged handler Nene Leakes for Phil. But if you watch Sunday night's episode, then you already know that this all might have been a scheme that Nene set up to come to us with the snake game. Well, it could have been a scheme. I joined most of y'all in feeling like Bravo definitely drugged the snake gate all the way out. Y'all know I'd been on hiatus and when I finally watched the episodes, I remember being underwhelmed by this entire thing. I never felt like it was that big of a deal, especially since Nene and Cynthia were definitely not friends. Um, you just tell her that if you're blind, get it. I don't owe her that. She didn't tell me anything when I needed to know. She didn't give me any warning signs. She didn't give me a heads up. So I'm not giving her a heads up. No. In my opinion, all of my enemies have free reign to dog me out and make up all kind of sleazy stories about me and do whatever they please because while they're running their mouths, I'm running to the bank, darling, cashing a YouTube check. <laughs> and reading the comments online, I knew that I wasn't alone. But at the same time, they definitely had me low-key shook because I felt like it was so obvious that the snake had to be Javina, but they drug it out so long and played in our face so much, they had me thinking to myself like, oh no, it can't be Yomina because it had to be way more explosive for them to be doing all this. I had to say, last night's episode was pretty funny though, and one of the highlights was Yomani delusionally thinking that Nini had her back and being left out to dry. <laughs> and of course, I know I wasn't the only one that had to clutch my pearls when Trovana tried to get Portia all the way together about Dennis. The snake is your man. No, no, no. You are not talking about my family, bitch. With at daddy underscore dollar tweeting out, the look on everybody's face when Portia was about to mollywop Yovana across that scalp for talking about her man. <laughs> right, Portia was not taking no disrespect. 
Yes, after all this time, Sunday night, Nini finally revealed to us that the snake in the group was Novana. Is Yovana the snake? Snake is just not a nice word, okay? So I wouldn't call her a snake. Is Yovana the one with information? Yes. Call the police. We need to call the police. Speaking of Black Twitter, there were a lot of people who were really upset with Nini after they felt like Nini basically made this whole thing up. Or at the very least, Nini manipulated Yovana into bringing this mess to the show in order to seek revenge on Cynthia Bailey. And judging by the way the episode went, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Nini Leaks is a snake, but something ain't adding up. So I have to ask, is Nene Leaks the real snake? Now, Nene fans, if you can't handle us talking about the facts, this is a part of the video where you just go ahead and close out because we tried to protect your queen, but she's the one that really got herself into this mess in the first place. Basically, Nene Leaks admitted herself that she wanted Yovana to speak up and let these girls know what Cynthia said behind her back. And I believe that Yovana and Nini were being pretty desperate this season for different reasons. Yo-Yo will clearly do anything it takes for a chance to have a moment on this show. And Nini Leaks is clearly not in a good place with most of these girls. And quite frankly, Kenya already laid that out for us just a few episodes back. She has no other choice but to seem as though she's taking accountability because she is over there on a dusty old island by herself and nobody will play with her. First it was Candy, then Tanya, and now Eva. Next must be Portia and Cynthia because she's not coming over here. Yes, I feel like that was definitely Nini's motive. She wanted to humiliate Cynthia and reveal that side that apparently Cynthia doesn't want us to see. This is the 50 Cent that I know. You are just not getting to see her. That's who she is. But you never win when you play dirty. And that's exactly why fans have already started turning. With one fan tweeting, at the end of the day, Nini is enraged that Kenya stole Cynthia from her. She hates that Cynthia is done with her. She wanted to make Cynthia look bad with this recording crap and left her friend, Yovana, out to dry. And another one of my followers took me out with this one commenting, sounds familiar, dot, dot, dot. Like how phony Fei-Fei did Portia? Yeah, to a certain extent, I agree. And Nini fans are just gonna have to take this L. Nini probably consulted with Phaedra, but she clearly didn't finish her training because this all came crumbling apart right in Nini's face. Yovana just can't handle that smoke, and that's why I lost it on Instagram last night when I saw that Yomina blocked me for nothing. Yes, if you aren't following me on the gram, you're the snake. <laughs> I went off last night posting a screenshot of how it looked when I tried to check on Yomani last night only to find that I was blocked. Captioning the post, girl, ain't nobody even checking for you to be doing any blocking with the crying face emoji and the funny face emoji. Never even mention you here for real, for real, dot, dot, dot. You need to block Nini for making you look like a whole clown ever since she wanted to beat you up at Marlo's event for touching her car. <laughs> Nini. Where you going, Nini? Girl, if you hit my one, I'll Why do you that. Leaving? This is not my life. Hashtag can't sit with us. Hashtag buy. Hashtag sneakity snake snake. Hashtag you played yourself. Hashtag puppet master. Hashtag Nini used you, sis. Hashtag we felt sorry for you. Hashtag scram pam. And hashtag a whole clown. And one of my followers was just as petty, commenting, you couldn't have said it better, dot, dot, dot. I would have removed myself from mere embarrassment with the car situation. <laughs> 
yeah. Although she pissed me off, I did feel bad for her though that Bravo wouldn't even let her stay on the trip like those last couple of days. Like they sent our good sits home. <laughs> And they were so petty that they just actually filmed her like walking out and looking so pitiful. So let's just have a moment of silence for Yomani. You even to do nothing with me now. I ain't gonna never be what you want. You is a dumb ass bitch. You are big you ass dog. Oh, oh, you got too much money. You got too much Hold up, hold up, hold all the way up, y'all. The trailer for The Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12 is finally here, and I feel like Bravo was so hype about those ratings for Snake Gate that they decided to bless us with even more piping hot tea. <laughs> It's Justin Diego back with another binge-worthy video. And today, let's watch this mid-season trailer that Bravo just released and find out what's still to come for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And then, we'll chat. This season on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Still to come on this season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. No! Are you crazy? <laughs> 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 ready to start a faithful journey with me. Once a cheater, always a cheater. I don't want us to have an issue. I really don't. There's no issue. Can you agree? I know what's the miss of it, but she ain't herself in the front of him. She looks quiet, look at her like a church crowd. Life! <laughs> give up that dream. It's really hard. <laughs> hey, I want to plan a wedding. I'm going to have a wedding. Let me know when you talk about prenup. Money. You knew that I wanted to start acting more. You gotta let that go. It ain't that important. I got some new things to do. You're aggravating me and you expect me you to say... You the out of me. I'll say sorry when I feel like it. Friends! No. When you get mad at your friends, you're the first one to try to tear them down. Really? The fact is you were a real Oh, oh my god! It's the cookie lady. Desserts on me. You ain't gonna do nothing with me now. I ain't gonna never be what you want. You is a dumb ass bitch. You are a dumb ass bitch. You got too much money. You got too much money. Everybody stop! Okay. Let me just give y'all a second to catch a breath and get your wig situated because. Tell us what the f I'm talking about. Tell us what I'm talking about. First of all, what just happened? Like, did I just see Candy and Todd, like the perfect couple, fighting like for real, for real? And did I really see Nene spit on Kenya? I just gotta gather myself because <laughs> I was all the way caught off guard. Yes, everyone looks like they were having a blast for the most part on this girl's trip to Greece, but I remember that I didn't really get to cover this trip this summer because I didn't get any legitimate information about what went down on the trip to Greece. So I assumed that it was like a snooze fest and apparently I was wrong. They brought it in this trailer y'all and I am so glad that I am not the only one over here shook all by myself because the reactions to this trailer have been off the chain with some fans commenting saying you child this is juicy exclamation point waves church fan this has been the best season and the people said the show wouldn't be good after season nine with the crying laughing face emoji before miss <laughs> forbes commented saying they really brought that wrinkly face auntie to try and rain on pretty ass fun as tanya's parade dot 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 corny as f before another fan commented saying okay so she did try to spit at kenya with the ovary emoji and where is yo-yo in this trailer <laughs> with the questioning wondering kind of emoji 
and I'm with the homie who commented saying, my lord, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, get me to the second half of the season now. <laughs> yes, there is so much in this trailer that I need to talk about, but I don't really know where to start. So I'll just start with what I know everyone else is talking about. Did Nini Leaks really spit on Kiyomura? Oh, God, we got too much money. We got too much. Everybody stop! First of all, that's just gross. And I'm with Miss Pooh on this one who commented saying, Lumi spitting? Dot, 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 dot. Somebody needs to snatch her life. Spit on me? I'll take your life. Period. And <laughs> I don't condone violence, but the last time I remember somebody really trying to spit on somebody on reality TV, it didn't go over so well. Get her out of here. Okay, she's gone. Actually, I can slap the shit yeah, out of you. Do I'm it! Done. Slap me, bitch. <laughs> what? You motherfucking <laughs> You motherfucking put your motherfucking hands on me? Did you see that <laughs> fucking spit in my motherfucking face? I also feel like I remember hearing that Nene Leaks denied spitting on Kenya a few days ago after the story broke on the blocks. He's saying that I spit on her. She said it, I spit on her, and she said it on Wendy Williams' show that I spit on her, and she said it several other places. Technically, Kenya never said that Nene spit on her. Instead, she told Wendy Williams that Nene acted like she was going to spit on her. She tried to act like she was going to spit on me, and you will see that on the show. How does somebody try to spit? Do you go hawking up? Oh, yes. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, really? Mm hmm Really. That's, that was what I thought. At first, I was like, well, girl, if you didn't really spit on Kenya, it looks like you spit on somebody, girl. But I have to admit that I did get a little petty and I edited it to look like something actually came out of Nini's mouth because I was feeling the fantasy. But I mean, <laughs> that's what y'all signed up for, right? Basically, she wanted to spit on Kenya more and she may have even spit at her, but it didn't reach Kenya. I think that attempting to spit on someone, threatening to spit on someone, I think it's the ultimate in disrespect. Tell me what you guys think. Do you feel like this is like totally gross or do you think all is fair in love and war? No more pain and no more drama. If that's what you're coming with, to the left. Switching gears a little, we all know that Kenya's husband, Mark, is a Nini fan for some strange reason. And looking at the trailer, I really thought that it was interesting that Mark really wanted these two to make amends. And let me say this, I totally understand why Kenya was like, you know what? It took me long enough to get this man to be open to filming, to let me just shut my mouth and play along because it is not that deep. But I know that like, she really didn't expect that to last long. And I feel like Mark, girl, you really need to be trying to mend your own relationship with Kenya and try to fix your marriage. Yes, I remember being so shook that days after announcing her split from Mark Daly, Kenya joined the girls in Greece for their final all-cast trip. And it looks like Nini definitely showed no remorse for her bad news, but I'm glad that Kenya definitely had both Cynthia and Candy there for moral support. I can't wait to see how this all plays out on the show, not because I'm happy to see Kenya's marriage fail, but I think that it's time that a lot of those questions that we had about Kenya's marriage finally get answered. Now, before I head out, I have to say that I joined so many Real Housewives of Atlanta fans and being so excited about Nini and Portia finally making up. I love you, I think sister, and I'm sorry. I'm really you. I think it's always been obvious that Portia definitely looks up to Nini and her marriage, and it's good that Portia really gets to have Nini help her navigate through some of these obstacles that she's been facing in her relationship with Dennis. And I have to say that this cookie lady needs to go sit her behind down somewhere because I understand how bad people really want to make a name for themselves these days and how awesome it is to be on Real Housewives of Atlanta, but sis, this ain't it. Like for real, y'all, Auntie really over here looking like a whole clown making something out of nothing. Tanya, just know that we definitely got your back. In the last episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, 
Revelations about Snakegate left all of us bent out of shape and almost brought Nene Leakes and Kenya Moore to blows. Kenya, you shut the up, then. Don't let me have to stick a pin in that fake butt and push the air out. <laughs> but it was bad news that Kenya Moore shared about Tanya that left fans of the show really feeling some type of way. I know Kenya is shady, but even for Kenya, it's like, it's like girl. It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And today, I have to talk about how upset I am with Kenya Moore right now and why I think she's going down the wrong road. We're about to go back down the wrong road. Wrong road. Wrong road. Now, y'all know that I was one of the people definitely campaigning to have Kenya Moore back on the show last year and when I caught wind of her return, I was probably the happiest person because I thought that Kenya would add a lot more of what the show had been missing. Little did I know, Kenya is back to her old messy ways and it's got a lot of us giving her the side eye. When she sat down at the group table, bringing up a hypothetical scenario in which one of the ladies were getting played by their man, I could not believe it. So if you suspect or have heard that someone's man in the group is cheating. I don't know. Portia. Yeah, like putting his penis in inside of somebody else? Yeah. Or yeah. dating I mean, somebody? It just puts me in a really uncomfortable spot because I'm actually privy to this information. I was cringing in my seat for two main reasons. First, don't play in anybody's face like that because there is nothing worse than being in a room with people that you thought you could trust and some or all of them know your tea and you're the only one that's not in on the joke. Yes, well, absolutely. if a woman came up to you and said this stuff, right. yeah. and, the, and it's the woman who's accusing them. Yes, I would not want to know if people were going around saying that. And you know, there's a cute little cookie place right here. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you ladies? So you know your boy, uh, Paul? Yes. Ty, Tanya's husband. But nothing but he kind of like was all over me just just like buying me drinks telling me not to leave somewhere and secondly didn't Tanya and Sam just fly y'all out with premium accommodations all the way to Canada with custom outfits for carnival with all the bells and whistles I feel like that is the ultimate slap in the face and if I were Tanya I definitely want all my money back <laughs> I have an announcement to make as of Friday, January 17th, 2020, I, Justin Diego, am done riding with Team Twirl. And it seems like I'm not the only one, with fans throwing all the shade on Twitter, like this fan who tweeted, Tanya ain't did anything wrong to anyone. She has such poetic energy, posted them, and gave them a great trip. And now, Kenya targeting her? Question mark, question mark. And another Housewives fan tweeted, If you come for Tanya, you really ain't shit. She really don't bother anyone. Period. Before All About the Tea who tweeted, Kenya's man doesn't want her. So she can't wait to embarrass Tanya Sam with this lukewarm tea about her man supposedly cheating. Hashtag evil ass. Again, I usually ride really hard for Kenya, but girl, Bravo came through with receipts. You literally said girlfriend to girlfriend before you gave that fake advice about her having a baby ASAP with the guy you feel was cheating on her. The day before, she literally was demanding that I put my single leg back in my uterus right now. Why are you waiting? I feel like I want to just keep working to get more out. Why? Honestly, girlfriend to girlfriend. Put it in. You just need to do a cycle. Come on, that is too far. So she ain't shy about telling me about me. And another thing that had me totally shook was how much it seemed Candy was really enjoying every minute of this. Chocolate chip, anyone? <laughs> when do you, when do it become? Now, I'm still Team Candy, but I feel like it was uncharacteristic of her to be rocking like this, and it made me even more annoyed with the situation. Again, this is how y'all treat the person who did all that for y'all in Serrano? Woo, child, the ungratefulness. 
Candy, we're getting this question everywhere. Why do you seem to be riding so hard for Kenya when she was clearly being messy? Well, you know, like I said, I mean, I guess it depends on your opinion. I feel like it doesn't matter what she does, people are gonna say that Kenya's being messy. Now, mind you, she did bring it up. And yeah, we do make little jokes and bring stuff up, but she never said the girl's name, ever. So to me, it's like, yeah, yes, you could say she was trying to be like, the, like get people talking, but if nobody else except for Cynthia and I really had an idea of what was going on, nobody would ever know what was happening. Let me get this right. It's okay to not only gossip about one of your girlfriends behind their back, but it's also cool to withhold tea about their situation while tiptoeing around that said issue in their face? This is all news to me. Now, I do get that Cynthia and Kenya did not seek out this tea from the cookie lady. This tea was brought to them, but the way that they handled that tea is what I find the most disgusting. Comment right now and let me know if y'all think Kenya, Cynthia, and Candy owe Tanya an apology, or is it just me? And for what it's worth, I was really excited that Tanya didn't sit back and just like let Kenya play her. She was like, okay girl, if you really trying to like finesse and like get one over on me, girl, let me air your ass all the way out. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Wiggate. <laughs> Yes, Tanya dropped a whole bomb here on Kenya that really shakes things up. I might have something on her. Oh! After y'all left, she sent me a text message. She was like, hey girl, I left something at the hotel. And I opened it up. It was a phone charger and a wig. You are lying! I have the wig here. She does brag about her hair being all natural. Yeah, all natural underneath her wig. I remember in that group scene, something did look off with Kenya. And when Marlo tried to accuse her of wearing a wig, Kenya kept trying to get her off her back. And if you notice, Kenya did a good job changing the subject. I want to know why yeah. you have on a wig that like well, all I, I have. Don't say that. Don't you do, try. I can tell. You go Kenya, on that. I'm not big. Oh, Kenya, leave. I have on a wig. Kenya has a wig? Not the one who came to my event and was promoting products for natural hair care. I know what you're thinking, like this has nothing to do with anything, but the thing that makes this revelation so shocking is that this completely contradicts with Kenya's whole brand. Hey! Yes, edges, get into it! She's supposed to be selling natural hair care products and getting the girls to have their own beautiful hair, instead of relying on wigs. I need to do the inventory because I was missing a wig. Now, I know that just because you have good hair doesn't mean that you're somehow banned from wearing wigs. And of course, I also know that wearing a wig doesn't mean that you have bad hair. But Kia Moore literally crashed Marlo's wig launch a few episodes back. So when it comes to this case, the shade is relevant because it applies. Because it Sadly, judging by the mid-season trailer that Bravo just released, it looks like this thirsty cookie lady is definitely going to get a little bit of shine after all. But I'm not putting my money on this turning into a friend of the show role anytime soon. Still to come on this season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. No! Are you crazy? <laughs> 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 oh, the shade of it all! <laughs> Great, 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 great. The sister, the sister, I don't want to be up this high. This is the bush. What's the great term for hater? Hate I love you like a sister, and I'm sorry. I'm really sorry without you. Everyone in this group has torn each other's heads off <sighs> and drank their blood. Somebody pushes me, Wendy, I'm going to say some shit. Give these girls friendship and love. Love! Do you really feel like you are ready to start a faithful journey with me? Once a cheater, always a cheater. I don't want us to have an issue. I really don't. There's no issue. Can you agree? I know what's the miss of it, but she ain't herself in the front of him. She feels quiet, look at it like a church crowd. Life! <laughs> to give up that dream, it's really hard. <laughs> PJ! I don't want to plan no work. I'm gonna have a wedding. Let me know when you talk about prenup. Money! You knew that 
said I wanted to start acting more. You gotta let that sh go. It ain't that important. I got some new things to do. You aggravated me and you expect me you to say. You aggravated the sh out of me. I'll say sorry when I feel like it. Friends! No! When you get mad at your friends, you're the first one to try to tear them down. Really? The fact is, you are a real. Oh, oh my god! It's it's the cookie lady. Desserts on me. You ain't gonna do nothing with me now. I ain't gonna never be what you want. You is a dumb ass bitch. You are a dumb ass You got too much money. You got too much money. Everybody Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Like this video and consider subscribing to Binge Worthy so that you get more shady videos like this one. And if you're a true binge watcher, definitely make sure you check out my brand new merch. We are on the right track, but it still doesn't change the fact you caused this. <laughs> Just remember that. This episode of Housewives was one of the harder episodes to watch. I believe that Dennis sitting down with my mom and my sister is a chance for him to really put his money where his mouth is. This is a time to look them in the eyes and let them know that he understands what he did to his family. Mama Diane or Norm may be watching PJ and I can't even call PJ because I'm locked. Like that's like some stuff is just too I, you, far. She got an iPad, you call it iPad. I mean, that's ridiculous. No, it's not, it's an iPad. Fans of the show got an inside look at what Portia is doing to repair her relationship. But I'm a little nervous about how my mom and my sister are gonna react around Dennis. They haven't been around him this entire time. They've been sitting with me, trying to heal. So it could go right, or it can go all the way wrong. And to be honest, it's clear that Dennis's infidelity really affected Portia's entire family in ways we could not have ever imagined. I didn't want to speak to you because I was hurt. How could you do that to her, you know? I did not wait all these years for my daughter to be a baby mom. I felt like you knew better. It's Justin Diego back with another Ben Jordy video. And today, let's talk about how Portia finally discusses bad news we've known about for months when Dennis sits down with her family and how this affects the future of their relationship and what Portia does next on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Portia Williams has really been a fan favorite for a while now on The Real Housewives, and fans of the show just can't seem to get enough of her larger-than-life personality that really shines through during her hilarious Housewives confessionals. I've been told y'all years ago, she's probably a secret shopper of Go Naked Hair, and it's okay! I'm not gonna tell y'all the account name she buys it under, but... Yeah. But her relationship was definitely no laughing matter at the top of the season when we caught wind that her fiance, Dennis McKinley, actually cheated on her during her pregnancy with their first child together. In the beginning, we watched Portia completely break. Dennis has moved out. He was unfaithful to me while I was carrying our child. Like, the only reason I keep answering his phone calls is because I keep thinking that he's gonna say the one thing to make me believe that this isn't happening. And after watching episode 12, we know now that the situation was a lot deeper than we realized at the time. I feel like it's important for Dennis to address my family directly because this directly affected them. Oh, look at her and the light shine on that little nose, looking like her daddy's nose. So I wasn't the only one that was hurt by this breakup. I was so happy to see Portia's sister, Lauren, really checking Portia because I feel like sometimes when we're in a relationship, we do get caught up in that fairy tale. And sometimes it's good to have a person on the outside holding us accountable for ourselves and really making sure that we're only committing to relationships that are healthy for us. I just feel like the grand gestures and the exciting and I'm giving you a ring back, like all that sounds great, but like just make sure that that doesn't excite you so much that you lose sight of like right. really fixing the relationship. She feels like my sister loved you, but you cheated on her while she was pregnant. That to her is something she wants him to understand is so serious and can never happen again. Their situation really is very serious and this episode really helped me put things into perspective. I have to say that it was pretty admirable that Dennis wanted to sit down with Portia's family to formally apologize, take accountability for his actions, and start that process of proving to them that he is fully committed to doing what's right by Portia. Because right now, I'm definitely Team Portia, and I found myself in Big Brother mode, like for real, because I was just like, okay, that proposal was real cute and all, 
court me in front of my friends, fly out to Toronto, all of that is so cute. But boy, do you know what you got here? Me and Portia have been through some, some rough times in the last two months. Felt like a year. Um, dealing with, you know, my infidelity. And I just want to apologize to everybody. We got a lot more work to do, but we family. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's very important to make a commitment to stick by each other during the downs and root for each other on the upside, right? Because the ups are easy. I'm taking accountability for my own stuff. If you watch the episode, you know that things were pretty awkward at times, but I felt that scene was really genuine. There were real tears and real breakthroughs in their family dynamic, and I definitely appreciated everyone just keeping it real. One of the things that tipped off bloggers initially was the fact that Miss Diane and Portia's sister Lauren unfollowed Dennis on the gram, and apparently they kept that same energy in real life and made no excuses about it. Basically, they didn't even expect Portia and Dennis to get back together, and they were both so devastated that they were just done, done. The only way he could even get in touch with Peach he was through her little iPad, y'all. And I felt so bad for Dennis. Mama Diane or Lauren may be watching PJ and I can't even call PJ because I'm what? Like, that's, like, some stuff is just too I far. She got an iPad. You call it an iPad. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's no, not. It's an iPad. This had me dying laughing because I just thought that it was so petty and so relatable at the same time. Another thing that I really appreciated about this episode is the fact that Portia kept it real when it came to Dennis's mama. If you watched her baby special last year, you know that their family was really, really tight knit. So I was personally wondering how it all worked out after Dennis and Portia split. But I peeked game about Portia feeling some kind of way about Mama Gina coming over from the very beginning. My mom on the way. Every, huh? So my mom on the way. Your mama coming too? Yeah. I. <laughs> you didn't say that. You said. You said my mom. Well. And Lauren. I think we we having a family meeting, so I think the that's family. important. Okay. All right. Cool. It's this, look. This your show. You put this together. And it really made sense to me that Portia felt some kind of way when Dennis's mom did not reach out to her after what happened between them. But I get it. At the end of the day, she was probably embarrassed and really disappointed in her son. And if he was telling her how mad Portia was, she probably just didn't know what to say. But I appreciate it, Miss Gina, just being honest with Portia. So I have to ask, do you guys feel like after all this, Dennis is being shamed and humiliated way too much in front of all of us and it's time that Portia just moved forward? Or do you feel like all of this is just his way of doing whatever it takes to win back his queen and Portia has the right to take as long as she needs? I really feel like this is a really nice opportunity for a spinoff. Now, I definitely watched their first spinoff, Portia's Having a Baby, and I actually really enjoyed it. Now, I know, I know, it sounds dumb to say that Dennis should be rewarded in this way for cheating on Portia, but that's not what I'm saying at all. I just think that we love Portia enough to see how she gets through this, and it's something about these two and their family that gives me elevated tartar sauce for the party vibes. <laughs> Now, I have to be honest, at one point, I did feel like he was just doing all of this as damage control, especially when he made that second proposal in Toronto. But this moment that Dennis had with Portia's family gave me a whole bunch of hope, and I definitely support Portia moving forward with Dennis and giving him another chance. I just keep saying it's a work in progress, and I'm gonna trust that he's gonna continue to put his actions forward. Um, now that we're engaged, there's no engagement. You can see not what we're trying to do overnight, what we're working on. Love you. Love you too. Dennis, showing me that my family's feelings is important. I just never had anybody care enough how my mom felt and care about how my sister felt to want to sit them down and apologize. That is the reason why I'm committed to trying to trust him again and wanting to work this out. 
Now, I know that we've been hearing things and right now we really don't know what the status of Portia's relationship with Dennis is, but comment right now and let me know if you guys feel what I felt after watching this episode. And if so, tell me if you feel like Portia is doing the right thing by giving Dennis another chance and whether or not you feel like Portia and Dennis are going to work out in the long run. Or let me know if you feel like Portia is making a huge mistake and she needs to run fast. This feels good to me. Mm, yeah, I don't know if I'm going for that, but. <laughs> I looked at my phone in between commercials and Nene text, I'm quitting. What? Well, I know something about Nene that you all will cry, be sad, feel bad for her. She's carrying the weight of a huge thing on her shoulder. Forget hair pieces and arguing with them broads. You know, you've got that secret and that secret is gonna melt their heart. It's Justin Diego back with another Ben Jordy video. And today, let's talk about this breaking news Wendy Williams just shared and how I am still wondering if Nene Leakes really quit the Real Housewives of Atlanta or if this Housewives OG has been unofficially impeached. By now, I'm sure you've heard the news from earlier today when Wendy Williams declared on her talk show that she knows something about Nene that will make us cry, be so sad, and feel so bad for Nene. In a strange turn of events, Wendy opened up to her audience during a segment where she was actually interviewing Jerry O'Connell, teasing some hot breaking news that left her audience totally speechless. Nene, you need that platform to explain. Yes, in this Wendy exclusive, she shared that longtime Housewives OG Nene Leakes had texted her earlier that morning, a little after 9 o'clock, declaring that she quit the real Housewives of Atlanta. It came in exactly 9.08 this morning, and I was not looking at my phone. I'm trying to get ready to come out here. Nene text, I'm quitting. <laughs> Naturally, it left fans speculating about whether or not the tea was true, but it's really the emphasis that Wendy put on the shocking secret that Nene is allegedly holding that really has me so shook. I'm not going to say it. She's got to say it. But she need, in my opinion, Nene, I didn't even call you back. You need this platform to explain the other part of your life. What in the world could be so shockingly explosive that Wendy would not only air Nene's business out on live television about it, but she'd beg her to stay on the show a whole nother season just to make that big revelation to us forget hair pieces and arguing with them broads you know you've got that secret and that secret is gonna melt their hearts because it, it when she shared it with me I was like I cried with her Jerry what's even more awkward is that Wendy confirmed that the tea was not health related and says that Greg, Nene, and all Nene's boys are totally fine. It all seems very shady to me, especially since Nene Leaks is denying these allegations on the gram and has made an official statement through a rep to Us Weekly saying, Nene has not made a decision about her future on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. With that same rep adding, it's been an especially difficult couple of weeks for Nene and she was venting to her friend in private correspondence. Nothing has been confirmed or officially decided for the next season. Now, I love Wendy and I was so excited about her and Nene Leakes finally getting back together and having their cute little bond. But I do wonder how Nene really feels about Wendy sharing something that she shared in confidence with the whole world. And at the same time, I'm wondering if this was a scheme that Nene set up to come to us with the bullshit from the very beginning. I mean, let's keep it real. If you know that Wendy is live out in New York at 11 a.m. and you text her at 9.08 a.m. a couple of hours before she goes out to give her topics, I can't help but feel like you were giving her a heads up and sis, you want it to be a part of Hot Topics. But, I mean... <laughs> 
I could be a hater and I could be wrong. But fans have already started adding their two cents about this entire situation with one person responding. Yes, Wendy is messy and shady as hell, but one thing we've learned from her over the years, if you are more than a friend in her head, meaning you're her friend friend, she will still talk about you. That's how she get paid. But she ain't gonna share no secret shit unless you want it out there. Case in point. She could have said what the issue Nene dealing with, but she didn't. So again, this was planned by Nene. Bad acting yet again. Before another fan said, I'm conflicted. Did they plan this or did Wendy really reveal what Nene said in confidence? Before another Housewives fan commented saying, ha, exclamation point, I knew Nene was going to be like that. I never said, what, I was quitting, dot, dot, blah, blah, blah. She's notorious for her implications and misleading. It's how she stays messy while looking like a victim. All before another fan commented saying, I smell a scam, period. Setting up a good segment for the reunion though. <laughs> I mean, the people have spoken, so I definitely have to ask. Do you guys think that Nene Leaks is really being impeached from the Real Housewives of Atlanta? I personally have said in the past that I will never not think about Nene Leaks when I think about this show, and I personally think that she definitely belongs on Housewives. The thing is, I just don't see the point of Nene sticking around much longer unless something changes with her pretty drastically. We are just tired of seeing her fighting every other episode with Kenya Moore and everybody else that rubs her the wrong way. Her shady little confessionals this season have been really, really cute and I've used a lot of them in my videos, but I don't want to see this grown woman jumping on people, including production, and talking about how she wants to whoop everybody's ass. It was cute the first couple of episodes, but <laughs> I just can't feature it anymore, my love. As much as I know people think that I can't stand Nene for no reason, the truth is, I just can't stand watching Nene like this. The longer she sticks around, I feel the harder things are gonna get for her, and Nene has admitted herself that Bravo is really not looking out for her anymore these days. They're for years, they're for you, and then there's years they're not for you. You know, they lift you up to bring you down. They do all that kind of stuff. Um, I get it, I see it, you know, it, it's hilarious to me. That's how this entertainment world works, you know. <laughs> it's just funny how they do stuff, you know. They pick who they want to pick and want them to be like the star of this or that. And I don't know, child, I just can't, I can't with this whole thing, I can't, I can't. It's just too much for me. It's too, 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 too much for me. And if we're watching the same show, I know y'all see it. It's all been about bringing Nene up when it concerns some sort of drama, and that's just not okay. And from what I see online, people don't really know what to believe about Nene these days, with some Housewives fans commenting, I think this is another attempt at a new storyline since Snakegate backfired. Before another fan said, with the way she treated Greg and her attitude on the last reunion dot dot dot, Adios! And another fan commented saying, Nene is full of shit, exclamation point, exclamation point. This is a stunt to garner sympathy, period. She is forever a victim, exclamation point. Bye, wig, exclamation point. Before another housewife fan commented saying, but she causes this for herself. She has no friends on the show to work with. This is what happens when someone is not smart. You cannot fight with the whole crew. She acts like she is indispensable. She fought with virtually everyone during the last reunion. She thinks she is better than all of them. They are your workmates, Nini. You have to stop creating a hostile workplace. Just get along with everyone and life will be so much easier. And I really have to agree. I personally do not think Nini is gonna really quit Real Housewives of Atlanta voluntarily. It's good money and I think that it's a pride thing. Instead, I feel like the network is pushing her out and honestly, they're making it really easy for fans to cope if they really finally decide to give her the boot. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, Nini's decision to act like she was going to spit on Kenya Moore was the last straw. You even to do nothing with me now. I ain't gonna never be what you want. You is a dumb ass bitch. You are big you ass dumb. Oh, 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 you got too much money. You got too much. Everybody stop! 
I read so many comments from all types of people finding that absolutely disgusting. So yeah, I personally am really worried about Mimi Leaks after all this. I will definitely be keeping an eye on this story and I wouldn't be surprised if Wendy addresses this during Hot Topics tomorrow, either offering more information about Nini's announcement that she's quitting the show, or we may see Wendy offer Nini an apology for flapping her gums completely out of turn. It's no secret that Kenya has been going through a really rough patch in her marriage. And during this season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, fans of the show are finally getting a closer look into Kenya's love life. But many of us are not loving the view. It's just been like, it's just been hard because sometimes it just escalates into an argument. I feel like when you argue, you know, there's lines you don't cross. He must have called you out your name or something. It's Justin Diego back with another binge the video. And today, let's talk about this awkward moment between Kenya Moore and her husband and why people are worried that Mark might not be into Kenya at all. And why one housewife in particular is loving every minute of it. If you watched The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12, Episode 13, you know that this episode was full of those awkward, shady moments that we've come to expect on the show. But there was one awkward moment in particular that really got fans talking. Mark and I are looking at this space because he wants to throw a charity event and we need a place to host it. The charity is called the Black Man Lab, and it benefits young black men who are looking to have role models. Where's the kitchen? It's no kitchen. Let, let me let me walk it through my mind. Let me come through it. Okay. I like the garage door. I love that style. You probably have a step and repeat here. It's got to be right when you first come in. I think you have your tables here. Bam, bam, bam. Not too close to the bathroom. The food shouldn't be close to the bathroom. It'll be tight for That's 100. like about, that's 50 people versus... 100 people. Seats can, the tables can't be near the bathroom, so everything has to be on this side. This is a man who has never really done reality TV, and to be honest, I feel like this was probably one of the main things that Mark wanted to happen that would justify him being a part of the show with Kenya. When Mark gets excited about something, he has a one-track mind. You don't really interrupt, you don't really chime in, you just let him do his thing. But if, the question is how many people the I feel like I'm table. chasing you. The tables have to be at least five people. Well, I'm thinking through, so I have to go through it visually. Okay. With that said, I think that Mark was just excited, and I think that he was nervous, and I really don't think that he meant much harm by this. You feel like he should treat you more like his wife and his lover, not a homeboy? <laughs> That's a funny question. But after watching this part of the episode, a lot of people had a lot to say. Like this fan who commented saying, that man do not like her with the cry and laughing emoji, shaking my head with the face palm emoji. Before another fan commented saying, that's why she's so mean to other people. She's having these kind of problems at home. Sis, let him go and protect your aura. And another person let something off their chest saying, he don't like her dot 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 at all dot dot dot. I'm almost positive what they had was nothing more than an arrangement with the exhausted emoji. The tea is exceptionally good today. <laughs> Who made this? Mm, mm, very delicious. Mm. Yes, these comments were off the chain and some people were even disappointed with Kenya Moore saying, I just like women like her, exclamation point, exclamation point. Have all that mouth in the world for other women, but can't stand up to no man, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, with the side eye emoji used twice. And I'm shook that she got over 300 likes. And this comment from Dominique really got me thinking. She said, honestly, when all you've ever wanted was to be loved from childhood, you are attracted to people who don't love you in hopes of convincing them that you are worthy to be loved, dot, dot, dot. When in reality, all you gotta do is love yourself. Then the right one will be drawn to you. He isn't right for her, dot, dot, dot. She deserves better. And I was like, wait a minute. Was that like encouraging words or was that a read child? Because I was getting triggered my dick self. And this comment from another fan took me out talking about, I would have just started fighting him. <laughs> 
yeah, I always expect Real Housewives of Atlanta fans to be very opinionated and I actually encourage y'all on all of my platforms to express yourselves and feel safe enough to talk about it. So go ahead and subscribe to Bingeworthy right now to join the family and comment your little heart out. And while you're at it, go ahead and follow my Facebook page and follow my personal IG at Justin Diego before you slide over to my Real Housewives of Atlanta page at Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now again, I can deal with fans throwing shade all day, but I was not ready to see Nene Leaks in the comments throwing shade towards Kenya Moore. Bitch, <laughs> why you mad? Yes, under this Shade Room post, Nene seemed to take pleasure in this clip and some fans joined her in laughing. With one fan commenting, Nene Petty with the crying laughing face emoji used like 11 million times and I love every bit of it in all caps but some fans wanted to catch Nini outside catch me outside how about that with one person commenting grow up Nini exclamation point we could be laughing at you later and another fan commenting saying Nini why are you throwing so much shade towards Kenya I see why no one likes you on the show. If it's not about you, you don't give a F. Stop acting like a donkey and give Kenya support. Makes no sense for a woman to kick another woman when she's down, dot, dot, dot. I'm just saying. Before another fan commented saying, isn't that how you treat your house husband? And one girl got straight up petty saying, just because you got an old dog you can control, doesn't mean everyone want old meat. That man is obviously acting too childish. Kenya trying to understand her man, but you feel it's cool for you to laugh? Yeah, people were over Nene Leaks, and this one fan really went there saying, Nene Leaks is really sad. You laughing, but was it funny when you made your husband's cancer stuff all about you? You know what? Let me back on up off the queen because some of y'all act like Nene Leaks is untouchable. Did I lie? Did I lie? Did I f***ing lie? <laughs> My thing is people are so dramatic. Y'all are always looking to see the worst in Kenya in every situation. I know that Mark has clearly done Kenya wrong in the past, and I know that in this episode alone, I wasn't the only one giving Kenya the side eye for bringing that dusty cookie lady to humiliate our Real Housewives of Atlanta princess, Taya Sam. But I feel like y'all haters really need to let up. I mean, let Kenya live her best life. I feel like things are just fine between the two of them. And I know I wasn't the only one that saw Mark smack the as like, don't be talking back to daddy. <laughs> appreciate it. Doesn't hurt. Yo, Good give job. me some doubt, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I think that Kenya and Mark are definitely going to get through this. Kenya is a queen and she has a strong personality, but clearly she likes being dominated by her man and there is nothing wrong with that. I am not dismissing any disrespect or abuse, but I think that this moment in particular is not that serious and I'm happy to report that Kenya is saying that she is in a much better place with Mark. We are in a really good place right now. Really? Yeah. Um, our relationship is really taking a turn. Um, he is. He has been so kind to me. Our relationship hasn't been this good in a long time. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How long has this been going on for? For since the beginning of the year, since last I think about year? a month after we, after we separated. This is so exciting. Yeah. So you see each other regularly, and I think it turned when we celebrated Brooklyn's birthday together. Mm -hmm. And and I, you know, listen, my heart is beating in another person. Oh my god. Yeah. And so for me, all I have ever wanted to do is protect her, and I will to the day I die. I said, let's do the party together. And we did, and we had a great time. Wow. And then I just think that that really showed him that, you know, I'm not, I'm not after him. I'm just, I want, I want a, a calm, peaceful home and a great environment for my daughter. That's all I want. Do you guys think that Mark will finally show up to the reunion this year? That would be like so dope. 
And I'm not saying that he's the type to repropose on national TV, but I can tell that he definitely knows how to handle a queen. It's been a long two weeks since we got a new episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And before fans could jump ship, Bravo finally gave us a new episode titled Hot Tea with a Side of Cookies, where Cynthia brings Tanya and Kenya together to work out their differences. But Kenya arrives with a shady guest in tow that left my mouth on the floor. I'm like a sleeping bear. I'm cuddly, I'm soft, I'm warm. But if you poke at me, I'm coming for that ass. Let me talk. Absolutely if you're gonna talk not. over me, we're gonna. I'm just gonna leave, and we're not gonna have this conversation. Tanya is just ill-equipped, and I don't think she was prepared for the rap that is Kenya. Tanya, that was some bullshit you did. The fact is, you were a real. Oh, oh don't yeah. say that. That's how you damage your brand. That's why you're so mad. Go on and read yourself. Since Tanya clearly came for me, and I didn't send for her, I sent for the cookie lady. And now she's here for Tanya. Now, about your eggs again. Oh, 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 oh my God! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Call the police. We need to call the police. It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And today, let's talk about this shady cookie lady and why this storyline that she's fishing for is just like an annoying pesky fruit fly that just won't go away. I'm just not ready for all of this. It's just... <sighs> now y'all know I love a good messy Real Housewives of Atlanta scene, but I feel like this scene was just way too shady from the start. I felt bad for Tanya because it looked like she was genuinely thinking that the smoke was gonna blow over so easy for her and Kenya Moore. But Kenya came in ready for war. Why I actually like to look extra pretty when I'm gonna read a bitch. I have always felt like this wig gate scandal was just not that serious. And I remember catching heat for not really talking about it and not really wanting to take up for Kenya, but I was actually surprised back then that Kenya was wearing a wig in the first place, especially since she had just ruined Marlo's wig event. <laughs> own hair care line to support. Why did you even come to be shady? I'm not coming to be shady. This is a great opportunity to market my product. <laughs> Lay Ashanti, what do you think? Baby, that was that was very bold. I I, I my mouth dropped. <laughs> Oh, Beyonce, I'm that yeah. was baby. So yeah, it caught me off guard when Kenya said that her hair care line was a million dollar business. So I have to ask, are y'all out there really using Kenya more hair care? And if you haven't, tell me why, or tell me if you know anybody out there who's actually been using it. And definitely shout out to Kenya more hair care. <laughs> is funny. Now, I can't really get into everything that happened in this messy brunch, but the hottest tea served, in my opinion, is the fact that Cynthia Bailey may have been out here trying to set Tanya up. Cynthia, but what you didn't say to her is you invited that girl out of the other ladies. Okay. Candice is off. Hi, Cookie spot in here. She's my neighbor in here. Because you wanted her to bring that back to Miss no, Tanya. No, no, so no, why no, you're directing no, no, all this no, no, to me no, and trying to find out and I'm doing back something back to up. you? That is See not you just did that is not true. Yeah, my mouth dropped to the floor. I was like, wait a minute now. Is this that girl that Nini has really been trying to warn us about for like the last year? They've always played Cynthia as this nice person. So it's easy for them to point their fingers at me. Your eyes ain't fooling you. Cynthia did exactly what she did. And what's crazy is she cut me. And she's really out here acting like she's the one that's bleeding. It's crazy to me. And it's easy for everybody to be like, okay, it's Nene, Nene did it, Nene did it. Trust everything I'm telling you. She is lying through her teeth. That girl is lying to you. I'm telling you, she is lying with no issue at all. She's lying. She's out here doing damage control. And I, I don't want to be friends with that. Let's be clear, I do not want to be friends with anybody that is willing to put their friendship on the line to secure a bag. Eventually, everything will come to light. 
keep pointing the gun at me. Just remember, she said I was a toxic friend. I originally commended Cynthia on being straight up with Tanya about this cookie lady mess. And I was glad that like Eva Marcel, Cynthia seemed to not take pleasure in this messy storyline at all. Yeah, if you watched my initial video, I expressed how disappointed I was with Candy and Kenya because although I can believe that producers could have worked behind the scenes to get this cookie lady story out, they cannot make anyone do anything that they don't want to do, especially not a seasoned housewife like Candy and Kenya. And let's not forget, Candy was not even there when the cookie lady first made her initial spill. Now I know I was not the only one shook when Kenya said that Cynthia was the main one that wanted to bring this cookie lady on the show so that she could bring that artificially sweetened hot tea to Tanya. I was never trying no, to this comfort Tanya. true. Okay. This, I don't okay. care. I'm not saying you're trying to comfort All right, her. Don't try to throw me under. Right. She just did. All the way under. And while Cynthia adamantly denied those allegations, Kenya insists that this is 100% true tea. Cynthia did invite the cookie lady out with the other ladies. Cynthia never told me she had a conversation with Tanya that would have made me believe that I needed to be on guard with her. And Cynthia should have told her herself. Comment right now and let me know how you guys feel about this and tell me if you believe Cynthia or Kenya. But what happened next really made me want to turn the channel, y'all. I cannot believe that Kenya could be this petty. And I worry that karma will definitely come back to bite. Yes, I'm talking about Kenya bringing this cookie lady officially to the group and actually giving her that clout that she has always wanted. Oh, hi. Oh, my God. Dessert's on me. This is the cookie lady. Oh, wonderful. Oh, You're right. Uh, okay. Good. I cannot believe my eyes. Cookie lady. Shiana. 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 Correct. Okay. I think where this conversation started Shiana. from is that you were out at shops. I was there with my sister and okay. two other gentlemen. Okay. I noticed the gentleman like. The girl, you had conversations at a bar. I still think that this lady is doing way too much, and I don't like how disrespectful she was being to Tanya. Why is it such negative energy, honey? Don't be mad at me because I'm f***ing gorgeous. Your fiancé just happened to just glance this way. It's I mean, not I don't think we're getting anything. I mean, and like Cynthia Bailey, I am pissed off with Kenya about this whole thing. Kenya's my girl, but I'm pissed off at her right now for two reasons. Invite a cookie lady to the brunch and for throwing me under the bus to make it seem like I was trying to use any information that I knew up to her tenure because that was not the case and she knows that. I'm not going to say that much more about this lady because I don't want to be that guy who is overly disrespectful of black women and to be honest, I really just want you guys to watch this episode for yourself and come to your own conclusions. But just know that I think that this is so ghetto and just way too much. But imagine how tired we are. Imagine how tired we are of it. This has been a long video and I feel like I've had to like give out so much information, but the thing that I look forward to the most is what y'all have to say on social media. Like Miss Kitty who commented, Kenya acts like a straight savage, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. She needs help. When she is not happy, it's best to stay away from her, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Before another fan commented saying, Cookie Monster talking about she looks better than Tanya? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Bish, where? And another fan commented saying, and where does Kenya get off saying the cookie lady is better than Tanya? Question mark. Not exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Before another fan commented saying, hurt people hurt people. Shame on you, Kenya. Thank you, Tanya, for keeping it classy. And somebody come and get this cookie lady looking like somebody's auntie. <laughs> And I made sure I corrected her. Y'all need to call this girl the cookie monster, period. <laughs> and another Housewives fan commented saying, this was the old Kenya pushing through again. I really thought her having a baby and marriage might have changed her. All this over a wig, dot, dot, dot. Especially when you brought that drumline to Marlo's event, tacky. 
And Michael brought this to my attention and really got me thinking, saying, Nene told y'all, if y'all sit back and watch, it's the same old Kenya dot dot dot. Did she lie? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark. With his hands completely thrown in the air because he is over it. And this comment took me out saying, the cookie lady was so aggressive with her approach. Like sis, what the F are you mad about? Question mark. You have nothing to be upset over. And after this episode, some of the housewives had a lot to say on social media too. With Marlo tweeting, Tanya, it's crazy how people react when they are jealous of your happy, successful, and comfortable lifestyle. And Nini tweeted out saying, there's a lot of things that other people can do that I cannot do for some reason. But if y'all can't see that, the whole table was a group of mean girls eating cookies. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Two words, you blind. <laughs> yeah, Nini was noticeably absent from this episode, but I was glad that she made her presence known online. But some of the fans were having mixed reactions, with one fan saying, she not lying. Nini, if that would have been you, you'd be requested to do a public apology to everyone. Before Mr. Gonzalez commented saying, she right, Nini gets all the hate, but Kenya and Cynthia are mean girls, but always hide their hands. And he got hella likes. But someone else commented saying, didn't you choke somebody, question mark, question mark, in Portia's voice, spit at somebody, question mark, question mark, beat up a producer, question mark, question mark, and wasn't you just cursing Tanya out last season for something so small, Nini? Yeah, and then another fan commented saying, you jealous, Nini, you're no longer needed on this show. They are entertaining without you, sis. Like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like it. Okay. And then another Kenya fan came through saying, Kenya carried the episode or else you guys wouldn't have anything to talk about. Because otherwise, this episode was boring. Yeah, like I'm kind of getting tired of that argument. Like I'm a Kenya fan and y'all know that. Like, or at least most of the time I like Kenya. But I just feel like just because you get people talking, that doesn't mean that what you did was right. Now, I'm going to end it with this comment because I feel like most of all, I just wanted Tanya to know a lot of us love her and I do not think that Tanya deserved any of this. Someone commented, Tanya, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. That's why I love you. You are so disassociated from disgusting behavior, yet you sit there in the midst of it draped in designer with hydrated skin and a happy bitch glow, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, you make me sick how amazing you are. Hashtag Team Tanya. Yes. I feel like when a storyline comes out that damages any person's relationship without having real tangible facts, I feel like it's just slanderous, malicious, and just downright ghetto for no reason. And to be honest, I feel like everybody is just doing way too much. Tanya is not even a peach holder and I feel like that's one of the main benefits of being a friend of the show. And missing out on that peach holder check is the fact that you don't get to get all the way aired out. As friend of the show, I feel like you should get to be cute, look rich, and participate in the drama. You should not become the drama. And I feel like, girl, if I'm not going to be holding a peach, I will be damned. If y'all are going to make a whole fool out of me. Go on and read yourself, bitch. With that said, I hope that Tanya has a post-dated peach because this is just way too much. The moral of the story here is people will do anything to bag a great man and they will clearly go to desperate measures to try and secure a spot on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think about this cookie lady situation because I know I for one cannot take these cookies. It is hard enough trying to get dinner reservations with your boo on Valentine's Day around Atlanta. But can you imagine your dinner being abruptly interrupted by the sound of three shots being fired just a few tables away? Yes, last night the unimaginable happened at the popular soul food restaurant made famous by Real Housewives of Atlanta superstar 
Candy Burris. We begin with breaking news tonight. Just in the last hour, a Valentine's dinner ended in gunfire. Customers just can't believe what just happened around them at dinner. A gunman walked right in and shot three people inside a popular Metro Atlanta restaurant owned by singer-songwriter Candy Burris. I heard two pops. Yeah. And I read. A man walked into the restaurant and shot another man somewhere in the lower half of his body. Two other people, two innocent bystanders, were also shot. The suspect got away. And the suspect took off. Police are looking for that person right now. I talked with one customer who showed up to eat here tonight, and she could not believe that this would happen here at this restaurant made so famous by the Real Housewives of Atlanta TV show. They were back there cooking and stuff. They just heard gunshots, and all of a sudden, they see the customers run to the back where they were. So take a look behind me here. The restaurant is now closed. It's been closed for several hours. We have seen a few workers still in there, but police have now completed their work here at the scene. It's Justin Diego back with another Bendworthy video. And today, let's talk about how it all went down this sad night in Atlanta. And let's speculate a little deeper about what news like this means for the future of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. We in here eating, ain't heard nothing. These folks got the news, crime scene, everything. Crime scene blocking our car. I had just gotten home myself from celebrating Valentine's Day when I got a DM from one of my loyal binge watchers saying, OMG, they are shooting at the OLG. And I was like, dang, I should have made that video about the rumors of Candy getting a spinoff that focuses on her popular restaurants. And I was like, it makes sense that they would be shooting on Valentine's Day. But let's be clear, by shooting, I definitely meant filming. To my surprise, that follower sent me this article from Straight From The A that spoke about an actual shooting, and it honestly left me completely shook. No one wants to hear bad news like this, especially not on Valentine's Day, which is supposed to be all about love and romance. And I can't help but feel bad for Candy because when something like this happens at your business, you are automatically the focus of all the headlines. Here's what happened. According to Atlanta police, shots were fired a little after 8 p.m. Friday night at the Real Housewives of Atlanta star Candy Burris' restaurant. Now, the sad news is that three people were struck at the Old Lady Gang restaurant when a man walked in and opened fire. If you've been to this OLG location in Camp Creek, you already know that it gets really packed, so I was concerned to find out that people had nowhere to go. So they started running all the way to the back and were in the kitchen where they were frying chicken, y'all. Now, according to reports, this was an isolated incident where the suspect definitely walked right in, right up to the man that he was interested in and struck him. But I'm a little confused because they're also saying that two other innocent bystanders were also struck below the waist. Now, the good news is that none of these injuries are believed to be life-threatening and all three of these people are expected to make a full recovery. As of right now, Saturday afternoon, police are still searching for the idiot who came in and ruined everyone's dinner. And the investigation, to my knowledge, is definitely still ongoing. Yeah, this is all so ghetto and I am just so embarrassed and disappointed in my city right now. I'm also confused because I thought that the OLG Kim Creek was in a really nice area. I've been a couple of times and I've never ever had any security concerns. I actually felt like Camp Creek was like an upscale black area and <laughs> apparently I was wrong. Folks are all over Twitter saying that they are not surprised because this area is apparently the hood. And one of those people were T.I. who posted on the gram saying, man, this is just another night on the south side, my boy. What the f*** is going on in this neighborhood? We don't get down like that. Everybody here is going to work. And I'm like this one Real Housewives of Atlanta fan who commented on the gram saying, dang, you can't go nowhere these days with the side eye emoji. And of course, I agree with this follower who commented saying, I bet this ain't got nothing to do with this lady, exclamation point, hashtag protect Candy B. And y'all already know how our people are always trying to make light of those tough situations with comedy. 
like Ashley Maria, who gave us a little comedic relief referencing that viral Bella Noche moment in her comment saying, if you can't go to the old lady gang, where the hell can you go? It's upsetting me in my home, girl, because we feel like, well, damn, if you can't go to Bella Noche, where the hell could you go? All jokes aside, I was happy to finally get an official statement from Candy Saturday Night that said, my family and I are truly saddened by the unfortunate events that occurred at Old Lady Game Camp Creek on the evening of February 14th. An evening that was meant to celebrate love unfortunately turned into something quite different. Our prayers and thoughts go out to the individuals that were harmed or in any way negatively impacted. We are aware that this matter is being actively investigated by law enforcement and we are cooperating with law enforcement to bring justice to those involved. As African-American business owners, it has been our goal to invest in our community by bringing jobs, quality dining, and a positive experience to the greater Atlanta area. We hope that you know and understand that the acts of violence that occurred yesterday evening do not in any way serve as a reflection of the old lady gang or its values. We appreciate all the love and prayers that have come our way, and we encourage anyone with any information regarding any aspects of the events that occurred to please reach out to law enforcement as soon as possible. Yes, I am so glad that Candy finally made this initial statement because it officially confirms that this matter is really important to her and it reassures her fans that their safety and security are definitely important. Now, from what I understand, Candy and her family were not at the OLG when this all went down. But naturally, people are wondering, will this air out on the Real Housewives of Atlanta? Now, I personally do not know, but I've gotten confirmation that this season has officially wrapped from taping, so it's very unlikely that Bravo rolled out the cameras last night. Instead, I expect Andy to ask about this when they tape the reunion in just a couple of weeks. Thanks so much for watching this video. I do not like having to report bad news like this about anyone, but I hope that you guys walk away just a little bit more enlightened about this situation. And be sure to keep the victims in your prayers. And definitely, let's pray that God places a shield of protection all the way around the OLG. I'll definitely be keeping you guys updated about this story on my Real Housewives of Atlanta Instagram page as this story continues to develop. Thanks again so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cynthia was somebody I had a real friendship I loved her like a true sister. I honestly cherished everything that we had. She was the closest person to me. Now, we're not friends. You knew that Kenya was going to be coming to That's not true. Hey! Oh, I think a monster's here. Okay. It was betrayal in my eyes. If anyone wants to fall out over that. this petty ass they let us fall out over it. To throw away 10 years of friendship, it's heartbreaking. She's just so doing whatever she needs to do. She looks really desperate. Desperate not to be your damn friend no more. I really feel like Cynthia is to blame for a lot of this, and that's just how I feel. She made this wedding about her. She made my Seagram's event about her. The cancer situation with Brad, everything is not about you. Because we had a great sisterhood, mm -hmm. I want to give it a chance. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, that was really nice. nice. Congratulations on the big opening of your new business, Needy Leaks. Cynthia, Cynthia. Listen, listen, we've been friends a long time, but you need to just hear what I have to say. Like, live your life. Okay. So. Justin Diego back with another binge-worthy video. And today, let's talk about how Cynthia and Nini made us cry tonight and why fans of the show may have been bamboozled this whole time. Well, you know what, Nini? I'm not interested in going back and forth with you about, like, mm -hmm. who did what. We both said some horrible things about each other. I think mm -hmm. we can both agree on that. Have you a moment. It's not even a moment, honey. But if you're gonna give it to me, I'll take it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
Now, before we get started sipping this tea, go ahead and like this video, click that subscribe button, and you already know you wanna hit that bell button so you officially join me and my binge watchers and are first to get updates about binge worthy videos like this. I'm trying to tell you. If you watched The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 14, you already know that this episode was quite a roller coaster ride. We've seen Cynthia Bailey and Nene Leakes fall out and break that friendship contract over and over again over the years. But we can all agree that it's something about this last fight that changed everything. In Sunday night's episode, rightfully titled Lions, Tigers, and Shade, Cynthia and Nene finally sit down to try and work through their differences. And to be honest, I'm shook. I mean, come on. This whole season, I've been one of those people spearheading this whole Nene Leaks is over party because I felt like the rich bish had worn out her welcome and quite frankly, I thought that Nene Leaks had started to feel like she was above the show. But after this episode, I'm starting to look at things a lot different. And Cynthia, I love you sis, but I know you feel this side eye. So it's been a few weeks since Toronto and Cynthia and I did not have the talk. And I just think I owe it to Cynthia's and my relationship to have some sort of closure. Yes, there was a lot going down in this one episode. I feel like it was enough shade and enough drama for like three episodes to be honest. We had Cynthia in this fake confrontation with Kenya. I decided to put Kenya on a case of ice for about a week because I really was upset about all this cookie lady drama that she intentionally tried to pull me in just because she's having an issue with Tammy. We had the animal print brunch drama. She's talking about the sisterhood. <laughs> These women right here are very successful. They think my job. This is the fakest sisterhood I've ever seen in my life. And. Cynthia and Nini finally got into some things. This is somebody that I consider a sister. And I felt she was out saying I was a toxic friend. I just want to see you and look you eye to eye and ask you why. You were really trying to make it appear like I'm not a good friend because I've been good to you. Well, well, well. Things were awkward at first. And all I could think about was all of those horrible things that they've said about each other and we've laughed about on social media. <laughs> Yes, Cynthia has been the most vocal about how she's so over Nene Leaks and how she's like done kissing her ass. And Nene has done some crazy stuff too, like calling Cynthia weak and boring. <laughs> Anyways, we know how these two play dirty. One of the things I know that you said that I definitely want to know the answer to, okay, is you have called me a toxic friend. Her exact words were being friends with you is toxic. When I made that statement, you know, you had said some things, you know, I'm responding to some things, and we both had said a lot. The word toxic is heavy, because I was a good friend to Cynthia, so I thought that was a stretch. I thought the word was nasty. Now, it's strange to me how hung up Nene is on this whole allegation about her being a toxic friend. But at the same time, I can honestly say that although Nini has gone head to head with some of the best on and off this show, she's been pretty consistent about how much she values sisterhood and having really good girlfriends. So yeah, to that point, Cynthia making these allegations about Nini being a toxic friend is really a slap in the face. Anything that I had to say that wasn't so positive was after we fell out, all the way out. After a while, we got into Nini talking about this mean side that Cynthia does not want us to know about. You know you have your whole side that you don't want nobody to know about. But what is the side I have, Nini? Oh, you know you have a side. And right. you have done stuff. But you don't want what, people to I, think that. I, I, you want people to, to think that it's me when it's you. That's the problem. What I do is what I do. Yes. And what you do is what you do. Yes. But the thing is, fans of the show are really starting to wake up. With one fan commenting, Cynthia hasn't taken accountability from the beginning with the woozy face emoji. Not saying Nini is 100% right, but come on. Before Katrina chimed in saying, I see through the BS now. Keep your head up, Nini. Hope you ladies work it out though. And Heart of Cold logged into the chat saying, 
Cynthia and Kenya have been doing interviews way before Nini even spoke, dot, dot, dot. It just hold more weight when Nini speak because she's more relevant. Before another Nini fan commented saying, Nini was right all along, exclamation point. Cynthia is shady. But Mal had Cynthia's back responding saying, y'all mad when Cynthia speak up for herself and mad when she don't with the woozy face emoji. <laughs> Yes, I love seeing what you guys have to say about the show because sometimes y'all be opening my eyes and other times we be on the same vibe like this follower who commented. I don't know, Cynthia might have a different side. Her friend Kenya threw her under the bus last week with the shade of inviting the cookie lady to an event with the thinking face emoji and West African baby kept it all the way real saying, after last week's episode, I've really started looking at Cynthia differently and believing Nini. Cynthia could be doing a lot of snake-like things behind the scenes and pretending to be innocent. Yes, if you watched this video that I did last week, you already know that I was shook. I couldn't believe that Cynthia might have tried to set up a scheme for the cookie lady to come to us with the BS. And I'm over that fake ass little scene that she did with Kenya trying to act like she was mad when we all know that Cynthia was really just trying to do damage control. Anyways, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that I'm not saying that Cynthia may not be all that nice in real life. But I'm just saying that it does look like we're finally seeing that she has a lot more of a backbone than we thought and she might have a habit of setting these girls up behind the scenes. I am just saying. You can sleep very well at night knowing this, Nene. I am happy. I really, truly am. No, Cynthia. Okay. Have your moment. Da, 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 da. It's the one and only Eagle Double G. No, go, no, go. Cynthia's exchange with Nini started to get a little heated and before I knew it, Nini had had enough and she politely stormed out. Typical Nini. She always runs out when things get too real or when she's being confronted with the truth. And then I always have to chase after her like I'm Forrest Gump somebody. What happened next was just so dramatic, but I felt for Nini and I really feel like for the first time in a long time, we got to see Nini really pouring her heart out and getting a fair edit. Um, what is it? I think you don't understand the way that you have made me feel saying I'm a toxic friend was, it was hurtful. Very hurtful to me. I knew. Yes, it's clear that Nini had been hurting for a while and shame on Cynthia and shame on production for not giving this woman a moment like this a lot sooner. There is a sense of relief because we have so much history with one another. But I have like a friend contract. Oh, a friend contract? One year contract, can't break it. <laughs> You're gonna grow from this it's and good. this is going to be okay. So, you know, well, I, let me I know just, if you need me to crawl in that old bed with you tonight, child. Get on to the bed with me tonight, girl. I feel like all Nini really wanted to do was make things right. And instead, she's been pushed and set up and just straight up exiled this whole season for nothing. We took one step. I mean, well, sure, we can take two, we can take three. I mean, it, it could only get better. So, you know, I feel like it was all worth it. I am glad that Cynthia finally decided to take the high road and she apologized. But sadly, I don't think that this friendship is really going anywhere. You know, even in my relationship with Mike, mm -hmm. like the people that you love, you have to know how to love them and you know how, you have to know how to argue with them too. <laughs> no, my bad. It was a long, lonely season without Kenya Moore last year when she was noticeably absent from season 11. But now, we've made it past that halfway mark for The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, and it feels like Kenya Moore just cannot win. Let me think. Would I invite a treacherous, nasty, hypocritical bully? Hmm. Yeah, no. It's Justin Diego back with another binge-worthy video. 
And today, let's talk about how Kenya Moore and her husband Mark Daly are back in the headlines after another awkward encounter and why Nene Leakes just can't take that much more. I'm just not ready for all of this. It's just... <sighs> If you watched The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 15, you already know that this episode was quite eventful. We've watched Kenya and Nene Leakes fall out and go head to head over and over again over the years. But in Sunday night's episode, rightfully titled Kenya vs. Ken, Nene Leakes seemed genuinely open to a reconciliation while Kenya was being petty from the very beginning. Of course, I'm not going to invite Nene, but if Mark wants Gray to come, that's fine. But I left her out of the invitations the same way I did on my posts. I mean, I get it. She and Nene are not in the best place, but I think that Kenya set herself up to look really silly by not faking the funk or at least trying to meet her husband halfway since he did finally decide to come on The Real Housewives of Atlanta after all this time for her. We don't want your money, man. We want your time. So you don't have to give us money. I'm glad Mark is trying to be more involved in the Atlanta community. For me, that's a plus because it means that he really is looking toward a, a future in Atlanta and not necessarily New York. Anyways, apparently Kenya was against inviting Nene to the charity event that Mark was having, but what was even pettier is that Mark wanted to have a bowling night with all of the couples before the big charity event, and Kenya was secretly like so petty that she didn't invite Nene. And she invited Greg, and that made everything like even worse. But fans were rooting for Greg when he set the record straight, basically saying that he ain't going nowhere that Nene Leakes can't go. Here's my dilemma. I can't go nowhere my wife can't come. Well, nobody, she's invited? No, she's not. She's not on the link to be invited. You are invited. If I had invited your husband and did not invite you, you would have a whole brand new baby over it, okay? Here's the thing. Sometimes I find it really hard to sit here in y'all face with all this team troll energy that I have bottled up inside because sometimes Kenya be bringing all of this mess on herself. Here is this man finally filming Real Housewives of Atlanta and actually doing events in Atlanta that actually shine some positive light on their relationship. And with everyone saying that they don't have good chemistry, I thought that this was like a moment that could actually, you know, make them look really cool and show like that they are doing good things as a couple. And social media went crazy because it was really interesting to see how Mark stepped right up and showed us that he wears the pants in this marriage. And it felt like the Real Housewives of Atlanta editors are being like so petty <laughs> with this kin mess. Point is, I want him to be there to support your spouse. I would never divide a couple. So I want you guys both there. Um, Kenya agrees. I agree. <laughs> So Mark calls Kenya Ken. Kenya plays all kinds of games. Kenya Moore. Fair care. But Ken can't do none of that if Mark is around. I love it when she's Ken, cause Ken shuts the up. Yeah, and you already know how Housewives fans are with AD tweeting, bish, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Mark really puts Kenya in check in front of all of her friends. <laughs> Before another fan tweeted, I wouldn't even argue with Kenya Moore anymore. I'll call Mark and be like, Mark, Kenya out here with this BS again. Hands Kenya the phone, Mark won't you. <laughs> and the captain of the cool kids left me laughing so hard when he tweeted. The thing I love about Mark is he can see past Kenya's the boy who cried wolf BS and he calls her on it every time exclamation point with the crying face laughing emoji <laughs> yes fans always have a lot to say and they were definitely even pettier than Kenya and Portia just getting so much life from seeing Kenya switch it up and show a more docile side of herself showing that for whatever reason she can be extremely submissive toward her husband Mark she just quiet look at it like a church brown I'm not sure if he has a, a real idea of how she can be. When she's with him, she becomes an angel. When she's with us, she's hell on wheels. <laughs> but everyone was not impressed with some people feeling like Mark should have stood up for Kenya instead of throwing her under the bus. And yeah, I agree with Portia. If we're in a relationship, you better always have my back. And if not, 
at least fake it for the gram and in front of my girls. But Dennis ever throw you under the bus in front of No, 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 Dennis, Dennis wouldn't do that because Dennis is gang gang. Listen, if I don't like her, you don't like her. You don't need to know why. I just don't like her, so we don't like her. So whatever reason I would have given, Dennis would have been like, yep, 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 what she said, yep. So let me know, do y'all feel like it's strange to see Mark so clearly trying to secure a friendship with Nene Leakes? Or do you feel like he's seeing through Kenya's BS and Mark is just so over Kenya's games? But imagine how tired we are. Imagine how tired we are of it. I do think that it is really weird and I would personally rather see Mark really just support Kenya publicly, whether she's wrong or not. I know, I know, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I feel like the wedding vows definitely say for better or for worse. In pettiness and in light, right? <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you can't rock with me when I'm wrong, but trying to prove a point with my enemy, the marriage is off. Well. Well. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I normally like to keep a little bit of mystery in my video titles and I normally do not like to talk about a topic back to back, but I just cannot help it y'all. I tried to watch this episode and see different angles and I really wanted to pick something different to talk about, but I'm just gonna say it, Kenya Moore's husband is disrespectful as f It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And today, let's talk about how I just cannot protect Kenya Moore much longer and how her husband, Mark Daly, is really rubbing a lot of Real Housewives of Atlanta fans the wrong way, while others are celebrating his behavior and calling him Kenya Moore's karma. Now, before we get started sipping this tea, go ahead and like this video, click that subscribe button, and you already know you wanna hit that bell button so you officially join me and my binge watchers and are first to get updates about binge worthy videos like this. I'm trying to tell you. First of all, I've really got to apologize for taking so long to make this video. I saw this episode early and I still could not handle all of the disrespect from Kenya's husband, Mark. And it's crazy because I'm one of the people who really try to give him the benefit of the doubt. But when I saw Kenya's good sis Cynthia was over the BS, I started thinking about how much like Kenya has just been breaking down and it's just not cute. So <laughs> I'm officially done. I still don't know all of Mark's triggers. You feel like you're crazy. Like, why is he upset? That is what's scary because you are in a union with someone that's supposed to be forever and you don't know who this person is. Listen, I get it. Kenya is no angel and she's definitely been the villain on the show for a while now. But hear me out because I'm definitely not making excuses for Kenya's past mess. I'm just talking about what's happening now and why it's just not a good look. If you watched the episode, you saw Kenya really opening up about how badly their relationship has fallen apart and how she noticed that his respect and admiration for her has evolved over the last few months. And to be honest, judging by the episode, it doesn't look like he respects her much more at all. Mark and I are in desperate need to just have some intimacy. I'm not always talking about sex. You know when your husband is acting differently. You notice when he changes his cologne. You know when your husband changes his habits, the way he speaks to you. All women have that innate sense of what is going on in their relationship. I don't know about y'all, but I've definitely been there. Like, it is like the worst feeling in the world to be in a relationship with somebody that you really, really love and just sitting there and watching your relationship become toxic. And I agree with Miss V on Twitter who said, I don't care how you feel about Kenya, no woman deserves to be treated as poorly as Mark treats her. If you're that unhappy, Mark, leave her and free her of this toxicity. Kenya, free yourself, exclamation point. Make room for peace in your life. The episode got more cringeworthy as it went along, and you could really just see how ungrateful and how frustrated Mark was being the whole time. 
There was a point where Kenya was clearly trying to take care of him and make him feel good about his little charity, and he was just so nasty and so rude. But I tried my best. Just told me this morning, I didn't know I had to dress you. I told you three days ago. No, you didn't. You told me this morning. You weren't paying attention. It's almost like I avoid anything that might make him upset because I don't want to fight. I'm not even gonna lie. If I was Kenya, I would have snatched that Gucci tie and I would have like started whipping his behind for doing me like that. I mean, I get that he's frustrated and he doesn't really want to film the show, but boy, please, like, can you at least pretend when the cameras are rolling? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to make light of the situation, but it's honestly so bad, y'all. I feel like they've got to be pretending. There is no way that two human beings can be in a relationship that is this bad. Okay, well, I'm gonna go start getting dressed. Well, were you getting dressed before me? Well, I have other stuff I have to do, hair, makeup. Even more drama unfolded at the charity event. All the wives showed up, including Cynthia Bailey, Candy Burris, Portia Williams, Eva Marcel, and Nene Leakes. But most of the drama between the girls was centered around the friends of the show, Tanya Sam and Marlo Hampton. Positivity, but it kind of feels like Kenya's picking on Tanya a little bit. I honestly don't think that it was ever that serious, and I agree with some Housewives fans that say Kenya was taking her frustrations with Mark out on the girls. But Marlo, girl, I don't know where to begin with you. Marlo arrived late with two additional guests, and things definitely got tricky. On one hand, this is an event for empowering and uplifting black men, and I think that it is sweet that Marlo wanted her two nephews that she's raising to be a part of it. But I don't know, y'all. I can't tell if Marlo's intentions were really pure because she didn't even RSVP. And if you watched Bravo's after show, you saw Kenya spill the tea that none of the girls donated to the charity except Candy and Portia. Even if I put you in a bag, you have a free seat. What's the point? You're lucky to even be here. You didn't pay for your seat. You didn't pay for the two extra seats. You should be happy that you even got an invitation. There was a misunderstanding about where Marlo should sit and Marlo made a huge scene about it that I thought was doing way too much. Yeah, we can go home, Sarah. I'm gonna go. No, because I got to sit at a whole nother table, not with everybody. Don't you ever let a person make you feel in second place. I also didn't like that she brought the drama to Mark instead of just letting it go and taking in the moment with her little nephews that she wanted to be there to be inspired so bad. But on the other hand, I also think that Kenya overreacted to this to some extent. But again, I think that Kenya's anger towards Mark was being misdirected toward her guests. I know that Kenya's upset, but I really think that her emotions may be misplaced in this situation. Maybe it's because she's just dealing with this man who doesn't even have enough respect to even acknowledge her. I wouldn't give a damn what Marlo was doing. I would be pissed off at my husband. And a housewife fan chimed in on Twitter saying, I'm still mad that Mark treated Kenya like that in front of the world. And she didn't even say anything or tell his to shut the F up, exclamation point. Disappointed is not even the word. Before another fan said, Kenya is better than me, I would have been cuss Mark's the f out. He irks my nerves every time they show him. <laughs> I felt that one a little bit too much in my soul. Speaking of Mark, Cynthia Bailey felt some kind of way about his behavior during the charity event raising concerns about him not acknowledging Kenya Moore as his wife and showing gratitude for her helping him pull off this event. This is the time to tell the entire world how much you value your spouse. And it's crickets. It would have been nice for maybe Kenya's husband to acknowledge her. That bothered me a whole lot. I do think that it was disrespectful, but I tried to chalk it off as Mark just being nervous and inexperienced until I saw what happened next. Now, before I go any further, I know that you, yes, I'm talking about you. You the only one here, aren't you? You have not been sitting here this whole time without liking this video? What? So nasty and so rude. 
Go ahead and like this video and subscribe to Binge Ready while you're at it. Now, let's get back to the story. They are nasty, entitled women. Stick on it. Drama and dance in front of all these people. Yes, I saw you on TV. What are you enjoying the while? I hit it. No, I hit it. Nobody knows that. If y'all really think that that is what Mark really said, y'all need to take a nap. It's never been a secret that Mark doesn't like reality TV, and he's never wanted to be on this show. That's part of the reason why Kenya has had so many issues with the network in the past that ultimately left her sitting out last season. It's my belief that either the audio was bad and Bravo chopped up this conversation, or they maliciously wanted fans to think this. But either way, I believe that the lady definitely understood that Mark was saying that he hates filming and being on television. The woman literally started with her conversation saying, I saw you on TV. Now look, it's obvious that Mark and Kenya are going through some really tough stuff right now, but I just do not think that he would ever say that he hates being married. That's just dumb. Or am I being delusional? Comment right now and let me know. It's obvious that Mark was over it, but I don't think that he was just over Kenya altogether. I think his frustrations were really with the show and he probably felt like he was going to have more control over this event. But obviously he felt like the cameras were ruining in it. And he even told them that he felt that the cameras were being too invasive. Now, if you look at what he said this way, it makes sense why he snapped and tried to shut production down. Tell them that's it, they, they can't film forever. Tell them they gotta wrap it. Got it, got it. Don't tell me I got it. I'm giving you five minutes and then I'm gonna take care of it. If I come back down, it's not it's gonna be ugly. I don't give a F. End it. But sadly, the drama didn't end there. We already knew that Kenya and Mark announced their split the next day after this charity event, but we didn't know for sure if Bravo was going to talk about it on the show, especially after Mark threatened legal action against anyone who speculated about their relationship. So I tried to keep my mouth closed. And he told me to shut, to shut my fat ass up and it was good for her. And what did you do then? I shut my fat ass up. In that statement, he said, I've come to the difficult decision to separate from Kenya at this time. Our daughter has two parents that love her very much, and in her best interest, this situation should remain as private as possible. I cherish our family's good times together and will continue to co-parent in a loving way. Rumors, innuendo, or false accusations only serve to hurt our family and will be addressed through counsel as the law permits. Please respect our privacy during this challenging time. Yeah, Mark wasn't playing with us, but clearly Bravo wants all the smoke because the girls are definitely going to be talking about it in the episodes to come. He can't stop until he has just completely destroyed me. <laughs> they announced they're getting a divorce. Oh my God. If she does come on this trip, Let's try to not talk all about the divorce if we can help it. I'm probably going to have to help that. She should have thought too about how she brought a woman in the front of Kenya. So this is going to get her a good wake up call. Wake up. Kenya. Be clear. Kenya and her bad skin. Okay? Lord, Lord, Lord. Team Twirl, what are we gonna do now? They are not having any mercy on the queen. With one fan tweeting, they need to throw a divorce party for Kenya in Greece. Like how she threw one for Phaedra. See how she likes that. Before another fan said, child, I would have been left his ass, laugh my A off, exclamation point. Kenya should have been sweeping her own porch instead of worrying about the cookie lady with the crying laughing face emoji. And this tweet was way too much saying, Two assholes found each other and got married and now don't like each other. Oh, well. And another Housewives fan let something off their chest saying, she invited the cookie lady to be spiteful. I have no sympathy. She used to always attack other wives and their husbands. Doesn't feel good when it's you. Now everyone feels bad for her. No one's saying we happy about it, but let's keep it real. Cause if it was somebody else, she would be all in their business. No Fs given. And Christina joined the chat saying, the karma guys came to serve and they did. 
Yes, this whole thing is a mess and a lot of people are just like Christina saying that Kenya's tumultuous relationship is really her karma. But Kenya Moore fired back saying, this is my karma, posting a picture of her smiling with her beautiful daughter Brooklyn. Kenya's husband Mark Daly sets the record straight on health code violation rumors. Nene Leakes wants to bring Kim Zolciak back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Love is Blind's Carlton Morton appeared on Real Housewives of Atlanta before and actually fought with Kenny Moore. And Candy Burris just bagged her fifth spinoff on Bravo. And things are looking official official. It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And this is Leftovers, a new series where I talk about trending topics that were not hot enough for a standalone video, but are still worth sharing. Before I get into these stories, I would like to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Mark Daly, Kenya Moore, Nene Leakes, Kim Zolciak, Carlton Morton, Candy Burris, or anyone else mentioned in these stories. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. It has been a long, tough week for both Kenya Moore and her husband Mark Daly. After The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 16, left fans completely disgusted in Mark's behavior. I wouldn't give a damn what Marlo was doing. I would be pissed off at my husband. And a Housewives fan chimed in on Twitter saying, I'm still mad that Mark treated Kenya like that in front of the world. And she didn't even say anything or tell his to shut the F up, exclamation point. Disappointed is not even the word. Before another fan said, Kenya is better than me, I would have been cussed Mark's the f out. He irks my nerves every f***ing time they show him. <laughs> I felt that one a little bit too much in my soul, prompting him to issue an apology on social media. And while I'm sure backlash from Housewives fans is not at the top of anyone's list of life goals, after allegedly being cited 28 health code violations at his restaurant in Brooklyn, it is clear that Kenya's husband Mark has bigger problems to worry about. According to Bossip, inspectors from New York City's health department performed a routine probe on the Southern Fusion restaurant on February 13th and found quite a few things that were not up to par. Allegedly, food wasn't being properly protected from sources of contamination, cold food items weren't being refrigerated at appropriate temperatures, there was evidence of mice in the kitchen or the dining area, and they are alleging that live roaches were present in the kitchen or the dining area. Roaches, when the lights come out. <gasps> roaches! Jesus Christ. Well, apparently the story was not true, and Mark Daly's restaurant, SoCo, is setting the record straight on Instagram, captioning the post saying, For the haters spreading false news, PSA, we have maintained our A for many years. Our staff is amazing. SoCo standards have always been upheld. Please stop spreading fake rumors about a successful Black-owned business! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Yeah, I'm glad that they officially spoke up to debunk these rumors because child, I love a good oxtail, but I ain't looking for any mice tails with roach egg curry anytime soon. <laughs> now, before I move on, I have to say, Precious left me dying of laughter after she left this comment on my last video talking about, that's why Kenya called the health inspector on his bloop. Kenya was like, Mark gonna learn today, exclamation point with the crying laughing face emojis. <laughs> You've met Ken, but I'm gonna introduce you to Kenya. She's a shade assassin and she keeps karma on speed down, exclamation point. Hashtag team twirl. And I'm just like, team twirl, why are we like this? Do you believe these allegations are actually false about Mark's restaurant? And if you've ever been to his restaurant, comment below and let us know what is your favorite dish. Speaking of roaches, on last week's episode of Watch What Happens Live, Real Housewives of Atlanta stars Nene Leakes and Marlo Hampton graced us with their presence on the couch. What do you hope is brought up or addressed at the reunion? Is there anything specific? Everything, honey. Everything. It's going to be read session time. And while the episode was full of shade, it was really this shocking revelation about Nene and Kim that left me shook. Who from the past would you bring back? Yeah. I bring back Kim because, you know, she's an OG and I'm always here for the OG. Here's the thing. Everybody needs an enemy on a show like this. 
but nobody likes an enemy that they just cannot handle. And I really think that that's where the problem really lies with Nini and Kenya. On the one hand, Nini understands that drama is good for the show, but she probably doesn't like how unpredictable Kenya is or how Kenya never calls off the Calvary when Nini has had too much. Yes, I think Nini and Kim's beefs were always good enough for TV, but they were always able to squash them to make room for those precious moments that the fans loved where we get to see them like on good terms and like really pretending to be good friends. However, after Roachgate during season 10, I really didn't think that Kim was ever going to be able to recover with Nini because that fight was just way too much. Alright, so this is just it. Nini is sick and disgusting. She lives in a f***ing roach nest. She in my bathroom. What in the world? Either way, I'm surprised that Nini shared that she's been in conversations with Kim, and I'm definitely shook that Nini would actually bring Kim Zolciak back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta if she could. Do you really think that Nini and Kim are the best Real Housewives of Atlanta duo to ever do it? And tell me if you are surprised that Nini wants Kim back on the show. I think Love is Blind on Netflix was one of the best new reality shows I've seen in a while. And I especially loved that it was filmed right here in the A. Fun fact, I did a little digging and I found out that apparently the apartment that the couples are housed in is right down the street from me at Spectrum on Spring in Midtown. Yes, the couples were living their best lives rent-free on Netflix's dime. Anyways, I absolutely fell in love with Lauren and Cameron. And I would definitely like to wish everyone the very, very best. Except you, Jessica. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, not you. You can chill. Speaking of digging, this guy on Twitter was all of us when he discovered that our Carlton from that iconic Real Housewives of Atlanta scene with Kenya Moore was the same Carlton who was searching for love on Netflix. This is their first time yes, modeling. You need I don't to, think that you, you should be like Excuse wearing them. Excuse me, who are you and why are you no, talking no, no. to me? Who I work are for the mail agency. Who are you? Because you know? I've never met you. Excuse me, please. I mean, I hope y'all knew that from the very beginning. But if y'all didn't, I'll give y'all a pass. And all of a sudden, this big guy rolls up on Carlton, who's like a twig. Yeah. She got loud with me because of one of my coworkers. He works for the school. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Yeah, clearly, Carlton Morton is no stranger to reality TV drama. But I feel like this show was not a good look for his image. This is a tricky thing to discuss, so I'll definitely try to keep it cute. But I feel like I have way too many sisters and way too many female binge watchers to act like I respect or condone what happened between he and Diamond. Were you shocked to see Carlton on Love is Blind after his appearance on RHOA? And let me know in the comments if you are looking forward to Love is Blind season two. At this point, I am not understanding why Candy hasn't officially left Real Housewives of Atlanta for her own permanent show because earlier this week, I learned from Straight From The A that Candy Burris has landed another spinoff on Bravo. Appropriately titled Old Lady Gang, this new series was recently granted permission to begin production according to the Georgia Film Office. And while we can't be certain of the show's format or what the show is going to be about, judging by the name, it's safe to assume that it's going to be centered around Candy's popular restaurant franchise the OLG. And we can expect to see appearances from Mama Joyce, Aunt Nora, and Aunt Bertha. Old Lady Gang will be the fourth spinoff for Candy on Bravo since she joined the show in 2009. The other four were The Candy Factory, in which she saw potential music stars, Candy's Wedding, which she focused on her marriage with Tide, and Candy's Ski Trip, which was a one-off surrounding her epic family vacation. And her last special was titled Candy Coated Nights. And for those of y'all looking at me crazy and giving me all kinds of side eye right now, you better stay woke because I see some major potential here. If they play their cards right, this next spinoff could be really, really good for both Candy and Bravo. All they really have to do is echo the former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member, Lisa Vanderpump, and how she did her restaurant spinoff series, Vanderpump Rules, which has now gone on for eight seasons and 146 episodes. And honestly, if they come up with a really good cast 
and some really authentic storylines, I think Atlanta could obviously give the world a Vanderpump Rules with a lot more soul. Would you rather this be a three or four episode special that airs after Real Housewives of Atlanta raps? Or do you think that it's time for Candy to finally break off and do her own thing? Thank you so much for watching these binge-worthy leftovers. If you're excited about getting more binge-worthy content like this, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe to my channel right now because I know a lot of you guys are actually not subscribed yet and you're just sitting over there leaving your fate in the YouTube algorithm's hands, but do not do me like that. Let's make things official official so that I can keep the lights on over here. On tonight's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya and Mark announced their divorce before the ladies took flight to Greece for an epic vacation. But before they left, Candy and Cynthia asked the ladies to be on their best behavior. Let's try to not talk all about the divorce if we can help it. But that request seemed way too complicated for Marlo and Nene Leakes. I'm probably going to be able to help that. Karma is a bitch. I can tell you that. <laughs> It's Justin Diego back with another binge worthy video. And today, let's talk about The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 17, and how this girl's trip is looking messier than ever. Now, before we get started sipping this tea, go ahead and like this video, click that subscribe button, and you already know you wanna hit that bell button so you officially join me and my binge watchers and are first to get updates about binge worthy videos like this. These girls are in for a treat. <laughs> or trick. The episode opened with Kenya Moore's tea being talked about between all the girls. Oh my God. Kenya Moore's explosive breakup with hubby Mark Daly. Oh my gosh. Kenya and Mark is getting a divorce. I'm like, I don't know. Her statement says, I can no longer be in this marriage. But were they ever together? For real, for real? Legally? And I really felt bad when Kenya completely broke down in front of Candy and Cynthia. It's really hard. <laughs> I don't know if it's divorce bad, but it's bad. And I was definitely surprised to see Kenya really opening up and telling us what really happened that brought the two of them to this point of like full blown breaking up. I don't know what happened, but he ended up getting in the Uber and we took off and then he was like, I didn't even want you to come. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? He did not say that. Yes, he yet. did. With Real Housewives of Atlanta fans going in saying, it's really hard for me to feel bad for this woman. The tables have finally turned on her. Now she has to deal. Before another fan responded, I hope this opens Kenya's eyes to sympathize other people's marriages as well. And Amari chimed in saying, she thought she was going to push him around like she tried everybody else. He got his baby and now he ready to dip. I like Mark. Before my good sis said, people be saying this is her karma, but listen, no woman, I don't care how disrespectful she can be at the mouth, deserves to have a man speak or act towards them the way he does. People keep saying he don't like the cameras, that's fine, but to take that frustration out on her and to belittle her the way he does is how no man should act. And another fan sent positive vibes Kenya's way, saying, Such a strong babe. Kenya, your strength is so beautiful to watch. Yes, we know Atlanta Housewives fans always have a lot to say, but I am not going to spend too much time on this part of the episode right now, so go ahead and subscribe to my channel and turn on bell notifications because I'm going to be posting a separate video about how I really feel about Kenya's breakup after this video because y'all know I love Kenya and I am just honestly way too shook right now to handle all this. Like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like it, okay? The girls all gathered to go to Greece and I think that it was an excellent choice. A few years ago, I actually slammed Bravo for shorting our girls with these girls trips and I started raising concerns after fans were feeling like our girls were the only ones taking trips down the street while other franchises were actually being blown out all over the world on Bravo's dime. Well, turns out a couple of seasons later, our girls have been consistently getting that budget that they deserve and this trip already looks so amazing. Yes, all the girls gathered to make the trip across the pond, including Nene Leakes, Candy Burris, Portia Williams, Cynthia Bailey, 
Merlo Hampton, Tanya Sam, and of course, Kenya Moore. I'm so glad Kenya made it to Greece. Now, she could have gave me a little heads up and let me know she was definitely going to make it. And the drama started at the airport. Yes, Nini and Marlo were ready to get into some things, since apparently, days before the trip, news of Kenya's separation from Mark came out and the girls all had something to say. I was one of the people torn because, although I love Kenya more most of the time, I'm not always delusional about her role on the show. I definitely understand that if Kenya was on the other side of this situation, she would be one of the people getting to the bottom of things like she has in the past. Talking about, oh, I can't wait to and see you Mr. again. Chocolate. The man that you've been sleeping with, so having lying. an affair with as a man. Oh, no, no, hey, oh. Oh. We all knew that they were going to eventually end up talking about Kenya's divorce announcement at some point, but I'm glad that it didn't come up sooner than it did. I felt like something changed between the airport and them actually landing in Greece though, because suddenly both Nene Leakes and Marlo Hampton seemed to be really empathetic towards Kenya, and it really seemed like they were both being genuinely classy about her situation. I mean, it's either that or they were both being fake as f I definitely cannot say either way. But comment right now and let me know if you guys feel like Marlo and Nini were showing genuine concern for Kenya or were they putting on for the cameras? Kenya's going through a situation we all know of and it's like an elephant's in the room. Like, is she okay? I mean, like, this is your friend friend. Okay, I get it. You're trying to be supportive. You're trying to show love. But honey, you're doing too much. Eventually, Nini Leaks was the one to get Kenya to finally open up about her situation with Mark. And although she gave us a little bit of tea, I was glad that Kenya said that she didn't want this trip to be all about her sad news. And I can't even lie, although, you know, I was glad that the drama had not unfolded and that people were being so positive about Kenya's divorce announcement. It was also so strange to me at the same time because I expected all that drama that we were promised in the trailer. And I was thinking, um, hello, 911? I want my money back because the trailers that Bravo had been releasing promised me hood sisters in Greece. Not all of this beautiful sisterhood, but little did I know, this one incident at the end of the dinner made this beautiful girls trip go all the way left. I put all of our drama aside. I wanted to just really give her real advice. Kenya, be clear, Kenya and her bad skin. Okay? <laughs> hey, hold on, this shit ain't funny. It ain't funny, but it is. What had happened was, Cynthia let producers talk her into trying to get Nene Leakes to have this heart-to-heart -heart with Kenya. And in the perfect world, it would have been cute for the show. But I'm like, um, what were y'all thinking? Because I knew that there was no way that this scheme to come to Kenya with the BS was ever going to go down. Yes, Nene took Kenya's actions as a personal attack. And we already know, when something sets Nene off, there is no way to get her back in her right mind. Because once she's activated Nene, we are getting Nene. Her point is, it's like, you guys have had all this whatever. Okay, she's and, right. And I'm wrong. I f***ed her man and stole her baby. What? Okay, so good night. Oh. Good night, everyone. I thank you. I gotta go talk to my man, honey. Yes, this whole thing is crazy. And I'm like Lady P who said, Nene is so confusing. One minute she acts like she cares. The next, she's saying mean things. I mean, you and Kenya ain't friends. You both have expressed that. So you don't really expect her to open up to you. For another fan said, she has the right to not talk to you, Nene. What the hell? Y'all not gonna be friends. You have said it yourself. Nene, make up your mind. Sis is not making sense anymore. And another fan said, I understand where Nene's coming from, but I also see where Kenya at too. We not friends, so why would I want advice about my personal situation? I'm just saying. Before my good sis joined the chat saying, Kenya said, I'm good beloved, enjoy exclamation point with the crying laughing face emoji. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, exclamation point. And another Housewives fan commented saying, so everybody gotta jump when Nene ready to talk or it's just over? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. With the eye roll emoji and her just throwing her hands up, confused and frustrated. <laughs> Y'all off the chain. And I'm with this fan who said, Kenya is carrying this season P 
period with the T. Nini just wants T to use it later when they are fighting. And I can't even say that I disagree with that, but <laughs> I know y'all want me to be unbiased, so I'm not going to say that. What I'm going to say is... I think this was a great episode of Atlanta Housewives, and I can only imagine how messy things are going to get from here. I saw in the trailer for next week that they got to the point where Nini really, really wanted to want to spit on Kenya, but I don't think she spit, but she wanted to spit. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they really got to that point. I'm honestly just ready for the reunion at this point though because I know for a fact that this reunion is going to be so lit. And I'm like this Housewives fan who said, All I want for Andy to do on the reunion is roll the clips of each time Kenya has talked about someone else's marriage. From Phaedra, Portia, Cynthia, Kim Fields, you name it! Hashtag roll the clips. <laughs> Yes, if you haven't watched one of my latest videos about The Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12 reunion drama that has already begun unfolding, go ahead and check that one out right now after you watch this one. On Sunday night's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kenya Moore finally opened up to Bravo cameras about what happened that shady night in Atlanta that led to her abrupt announcement about her split from her husband, Mark Daly. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> and if you watch this episode, your mouth probably dropped to the floor when Kenya laid it all out on the table. You can't believe who someone says they are. You have to believe who someone shows you who they are. And honestly, if you're like me, you're still shook because this is just way too much. God, come on. Let's take so long. Two. Talking about he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. What time is it? I mean, what time is it? Two, what time? I can't. I really. <laughs> it's Justin Diego back with another Ben Worthy video. And today, let's talk about what led Kenya and Mark to officially call off their marriage and why I'm wondering if there's any coming back after news like this. Now, before we get started sipping this tea, go ahead and like this video, click that subscribe button, and you already know you want to hit that bell button so you officially join me and my binge watchers and are first to get updates about binge worthy videos like this. These girls are in for a treat <laughs> or a trick. If you already watched my last video, you saw that I was so shook about this news that I couldn't even really get into the tea, but here it goes. Obviously, I already knew a few details about Kenya and Mark's split, and I've shared quite a bit with you guys here on my channel. But when I got this episode, my mouth dropped to the floor, and I know I say it all the time, but when I say I was shook, I was shook. First of all, I couldn't really believe that Kenya was actually voluntarily spilling her tea. And I couldn't believe that that tea was so bad. What I mean by that is sometimes there are things that come out and if producers or castmates find out about it and they want to bring it to the show, they have the power to do that. And they have the power to like force you to defend yourself and acknowledge it. And then it becomes your storyline. This happens all the time on the show. Think Phaedra and Mr. Chocolate, the Portia and Dennis cheating scandal, and of course, Tanya's fiance in that cookie lady drama. Then there are some times when you bring the tea to the show, you'll d himself because you want the world to know about it and you want them to have something to say. That is what really has me at a loss for words. Kenya, girl, you have to know that once you lay this all out on the table, there is no coming back from this, right? Yes, Kenya revealed that on the same night after Mark Daly flipped out on production and shut down them from filming for the night, he let her have it as well on the ride home. He was just like, live it. He was like, I didn't even want you to come. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Were you afraid of him at that point? I've seen him angry before. It's like he can't stop until he feels like he has just completely destroyed me. And apparently it got so bad that their Uber driver kicked him out of the car out of fear that something might go too far between he and Kenya. 
The Uber driver asked him to get out of the car. The Uber kicked him out of the car, Kimmy. It was that crazy. He was very, it, it got really out of hand. She has definitely accepted things that I don't think she would have normally have accepted had Brooklyn not been in the picture. Y'all, I, I, I don't know what to say. Kenya didn't say that he's ever put his hands on her or that he's ever been physically off the chain in the past with her. But as a housewife specialist, we can read between the lines, right? And I know that these are very serious allegations, but I'm like 90 Day Housewife. I need to find this Uber driver like right now. Attention all binge watchers. This is a public service announcement. I am offering a $2 million award to anyone who can produce Kenya and Mark's Uber driver. And I am officially offering three additional million dollars for any audio and video captured from inside that ride. This is not serious. Please do not expect to be dollar. I will only give you like $2 or more because I really want the footage, but I don't got the money like that. Y'all know I ain't got $2 million. I barely got $20. Don't play with me. Don't play yourself. Period. <laughs> But no, for real though, Kenya spilled even more tea confirming a story that I had seen a few months ago that claimed that Mark actually released his statement first and Kenya had no choice but to release a statement after. Well, he kind of like forced my hand with that. What happened? He just seemed just very irritated. My publicist calls me. What's going on? I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? You and Mark are separating and he's going to make a statement later today. I remember when someone first tried to spill this tea to me, I was just like, girl, bye. I was given like hella side eye because I'm just like, Mark is nobody celebrity. Like, why would he even pull a stunt like this? But apparently I hadn't stayed woke at all because this is true tea and Kenya said it herself. He forced my hand with that. It's just... You know, everything just happened so fast. Yes, all of this is just so messy. But what Kenya shared next about Mark possibly having inappropriate conversations with another woman really had me literally yelling at the TV. I look around and I see these text messages. One of the women was begging him to keep the sex going, even though the day Girl. that he was married. That woman he still communicates with after I told him this is inappropriate. I cannot believe this, y'all. Is Kenya basically saying that she got cookie ladied her damn self? And I, oh. <laughs> now, I did snicker just a little bit when Kenya got just a little too hood, letting this lady know that she bout that life over her man. Yes, I called her. Too. Oh, you called her? Yes, which I regret that I did. She answered the phone. I said, you might want to take me off the speakerphone. This is Mrs. Mark Daly. Oh, my God. And she picked up the mother phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, hold on. This ain't funny. It ain't funny, but it is Honestly, this is no laughing matter. And I just wonder, is there any coming back for the two of them after news like this? Comment right now and let me know. Now, while y'all think about that, I know that y'all already know Housewives fans had a lot to say about all this mess. With Lala on Twitter saying, I hope they bring up the divorce every chance they get. Let's not forget how Phaedra was about to go upside her head because Kenya was questioning her about her marriage. Grill that bitch. Before another fan said, I'm with Nene. You can't be messy with other people's relationship, but expect sympathy for the turmoil you're going through in your relationship. And Stormy joined the chat saying, Kenya getting all her just desserts in one full swoop. Texting Apollo dot dot dot, Mark getting text dot dot dot, Cookie Lady dot dot dot, Mark's mystery woman dot dot dot, Cordell running Porsche dot dot dot, Kenya turning into Ken. Karma's a best served cold. And Plain Blaine on Twitter tweeted, So this whole time, Mark has been cheating on Kenya? Yet Kenya has the time to be trying to brew some tea against Tanya and her man? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Speaking of Tanya, I can't even say that I was surprised at all about how she handled receiving news of Kenya's split from Mark because we already know Tanya and we already stand this classy queen. I would never wish this on anyone. I hope they can work it out. But at the same time, a lot of what she did to me makes sense. 
Yes, I thought it was so beautiful to see the sisterhood at its finest. And yes, I know I said I wanted to see hood sisters in my last video, but I'm allowed to change my mind, so don't at me. Yes, Tanya was actually one of the people in the kitchen trying to get Kenya to rethink her decision to not have that sit down with Nini that could have brought a lot of peace to all of the girls on this girls trip. Support each other and let it be that for now. All right. I think you should just say that, Kenya, because she's going to take it to something so different. Take it to a negative. Yes, we love to see it with Plain Jane chiming in on Twitter saying, Tanya is a phenomenal woman, exclamation point. Woo! She showed Kenya that grace that Kenya couldn't show her. But some of us aren't there yet in our spiritual journey with one fan tweeting, Woo, Tanya is better than me. I would have booked Mark's girlfriend a ticket from JFK straight to Greece, but she's more grown than I am. <laughs> And another fan of the show said, to find out Kenya brought this fake A cookie lady to attempt to embarrass Tanya dot 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 when the whole time Kenya had her own cookie lady question mark question mark question mark before this one outspoken housewife fan had a lot to say on the gram. Her bringing a cookie lady to me Tanya and you being a wife you should know better. But I pray Tanya got some pettiness in her because I would track down a girl that Mark was sleeping with and if I had the reunion. I tell you Bravo would have gave Tanya peach but like how nini stated and everybody else on social media stated that's her karma yes a lot of fans are feeling like cynthia and candy are being unrealistic about them wanting people to not speak about kenya's divorce situation and although i love kenya i do understand why people feel like her previous actions on the show definitely make it fair game when it comes to feedback about her relationship right now with one fan tweeting, Candy and Cynthia trying to save Kenya after she's disrespected almost every couple that's been on the show? I'm sorry, but she will accept this justified dragging. Before another fan tweeted Candy saying, Candy, I love you, but you've been doing a lot of Kenya A kissing this season. Woo! Ooh, dot dot because you know if it was anybody else kenya would be all in their business and candy actually clapped back saying so just because i'm a friend to her that makes me an a kisser um no and nini leaks chimed in on twitter making herself very clear saying the fact that her friends asked others to be sensitive to her situation but she was never sensitive towards portia and cordell remember her saying portia was his beard phaedra and apollo paul and tanya let's not forget a lot more tweets went down on the gram but <laughs> i've tried to find the best ones you guys will just have to look at the hashtag and search for yourself but I think it's safe to say it's hard for me to watch all of these people happy about Kenya's pain but I do think that this is a tricky situation and to each their own. I personally just don't see how Kenya and Mark can come back from this because now that these allegations are on the table people feel like they have the right to have an opinion and this stuff is always going to be here and people are going to use it every time they have a problem in the future. However, last month during Kenya's appearance on Watch What Happens Live, she confirmed to Andy that she and Mark Daly had called off their divorce and are working on their relationship. There were rumors that you're back together. We're trying to figure it out now. Really? Yeah, we had a beautiful brunch today and it was great. After this episode, it's hard for me to say that I'm excited about this news. Of course, y'all, I definitely want Brooklyn to have both of her parents. That's what we're all rooting for in like the perfect scenario. And I definitely want Kenya and Mark to both be happy, but I'm just gonna have to see how things shake in the next few weeks and the upcoming months because I do feel like Mark still has a chance to redeem himself at the reunion, but I don't know if he's even going to show up. A married woman wouldn't do that to another woman. Low. So low. That that was an acceptable thing. You have done so many things to your you up. After asking Cynthia inappropriate questions on The Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12, episode 18, titled A Greek Tragedy in Six Acts, Kenya Moore finds herself in trouble. But did Nene Leakes take it way too far? You're not in America. Act like you've been somewhere. It's Justin Diego back with another binge-worthy video.
And today, let's talk about how Nene Leakes brought out her alter ego, Nene, on the latest girls trip to Greece, where apparently she wanted all the smoke with Kenya Moore, and why she might have taken things way too far, especially since this happened right after her failed attempt to make peace with Kenya. I know who Nene is. She's fake and she's phony. That's why your husband came here with you, man. Now, before we get started sipping this tea, go ahead and like this video, click that subscribe button, and you already know you want to hit that bell button so you officially join me and my binge watchers and are first to get updates about binge worthy videos like this. These girls are in for a treat <laughs> or a trick. I have to admit that I'm one of those people that definitely turn a blind eye to a lot of Kenya's mess. One, because I stand a messy queen who always keeps the OG shook. And two, because I'm also an Aquarius just like Kenya, so I understand the way she thinks. I know, I know, everybody calm down. The difference is, I really don't mind calling Kenya out on her mess, unlike some of those messy girls in her alliance. Anyways, I do feel like it was really messy of Kenya to put Cynthia on the spot the way that she did about her wine knowledge or really the lack thereof. I think this wine is excellent. Now, what makes this excellent in your opinion? Not too sweet, but there is a fruity uh, effervescence. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, effervescence. I cannot stand being treated like this, and the worst part about the situation was that everybody seemed to be catching on to the shade, except poor little Cynthia. Please name four types of red wine. Is this a quiz? No. But I thought it was cool that even though Candy gets a lot of slack for not checking Kenya every time she shows any bad behavior, Candy definitely peeped game. She's purposely digging at Cynthia. And the best part was, Candy definitely checked Kenya Moore on the spot in the best way. How many variations of how many are you selling at your spot? <laughs> I, I didn't know <laughs> to be clear, I don't feel like it would have been as bad if Kenya would have just kept it cute and let like a little bit of fun shade slip out, you know, and everybody could have laughed one time and then just like let it go. But it was different for Kenya. Kenya was definitely making it so obvious that she doesn't really respect Cynthia's lack of knowledge about the industry that she's currently in. I was having fun with my sis. She should know what the wines are about. And if she didn't, we could teach her. So what? And yeah, did you guys catch that shade that Kenya threw when they asked her about Kenya more hair care? I, I, I said plenty more of hair care, but I don't mess with anything that I don't know about. <laughs> I don't mess with anything that I don't know about. And, um... <clears throat> Anyways, it was nice to see Portia, Tanya, and really all the other girls really rallying behind Cynthia and making sure that she was able to keep her head up. Even if I'm playing with my girl, I'm gonna still turn it back around at the end of the day. You're gonna know that she got the best wine that you right. can find and I mean, we Well, that happen. didn't happen. Yeah. And yes, as the episode progressed, we really saw that sisterhood getting stronger and stronger. And I really want to point out that this is one of the reasons that we stand Portia Williams. She is definitely a girl's girl, and I really respect what she did for Cynthia at the winery. I am going to rave about my friend's wine cellar. Well, we you should introduce you because mm -hmm. our good friend over here, Cynthia, has opened her own winery in Atlanta. Oh, wow. Okay, yes, we'll, we'll do that then. So. Yeah. I want to uplift her. If you watched the episode, you also saw Cynthia finally explain why she initially let Kenya slide. I kind of get Kenya's sense of humor when she's being shady. Since she's my friend, I don't always have my shade detector. <laughs> And I don't know how I feel about it, y'all. This is a very fragile moment for Kenya. So I just kind of give her a pass. But what I'm not going to do is let Kenya be purposely just mean or disrespectful. And this part is where things get a little tricky. Do you guys agree that Kenya deserves a pass in the middle of all of this turmoil that she's experiencing right now in her marriage? My thing is, just because I have a friend that can't be as good of a friend as I can be, doesn't mean that I have to stop having empathy and compassion, or that I have to be a horrible person just because of their flaws. So I can definitely understand Cynthia's perspective here, 
And I'm glad that she opted to finally speak up at the ruins party. And then it just started to feel like, okay, is it really a joke or am I the joke? You're never the joke. Honestly, it was just me being silly and having fun. I don't have to re-explain it. it. But think whatever you want to think. I don't care. I'm just sick of it. And that's how we got here. A married woman wouldn't do that to another woman. Low. So low. That that was an acceptable thing. You have done thing. so many so things. Shut up. Before I you up. I'm gonna walk away if this is what we're gonna make this about. Nene definitely snapped at this ruins party because although this girl's trip definitely shows that she and Cynthia are in a much better place, Cynthia's loyalty still lies with Kenya and Nene clearly has a problem with the way they rock. Cynthia is Kenya's <laughs> Believe that. I don't really understand the tiptoeing. I know that if that was me, that you would have gone harder. And of course, Beanie Leaks is right about how different things would have been had it been her. With Housewives fans speaking out saying, I can definitely see why Nene would be upset because it's a double standard. Cynthia knows that if that was Nene, all types of stuff would have been said. Oh, she's jealous. Oh, no one could be successful except Nene, blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. What makes Kenya's action so different? Because what she did and said was shady exclamation point with the hands on her chin emoji twice. And another fan sticking up for the OG commenting, Nene is right though. Cynthia doesn't hold Kenya accountable for anything. Nene is the queen of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Before Avia chimed in saying, how many times is Kenya gonna do something to Cynthia before she wakes up? She almost ruined her engagement and your business. Girl, wake up in her Nene voice. <laughs> and another Housewives fan joined the chat saying, y'all going to say Nene this, Nene that, just because y'all don't like her, but y'all know it's the truth exclamation point. Before even a Kenya fan kept it real in the comments saying, I love Kenya, but they don't hold her accountable. And Nene made it a point to bring up the fact that she and Cynthia were closer than all of these girls. Yeah, this is where this whole thing went left. And I mean, I knew that these were the same outfits that Nene and Kenya were wearing in the trailer. So I knew that the argument was coming, but Nene, girl, where did all this animosity come from, sis? You a big ass bull Wait a minute, now you right. just called me a bitch? What you gonna say about it though? What you doing about it? Hey, hold on, this shit ain't funny. It ain't funny, but it you is. You want me to fight you? What are you no, talking you about? What am I gonna lose. do about so it? All you can do is run your mouth. And fans definitely had a lot more to say, with one fan tweeting, how many you gonna say to Kenya, you're a big A bloop? But then in the same sentence screaming, what you gonna do about it? You can't beat me, you will lose. Like WTF <laughs> with the crying laughing face emoji. First off, y'all too d old to still be using the term bloop. And second, Nene basically trying to bloop Kenya. Like I don't understand with the crying emoji. And Prince Charming also tweeting, Kenya does things Nene would never do, dot, dot, dot. It's called apologizing, exclamation point. Cynthia clashed with Nene because Nene never apologized for anything, exclamation point. Kenya always apologized to Cynthia when Cynthia addresses her issues. So of course there is a difference. Before Cool Kid Dave commented, Nene is so jealous, exclamation point. The thing with Nene is, Nene never takes ownership for her bloop. Nene is so bothered by Kenya, it's scary. With another fan tweeting, Cynthia does hold Kenya accountable. The difference is Kenya owns up to it and apologizes and does not play the victim like Nene, exclamation point. And another fan chimed in tweeting, like Kenya says, Nene comes undone when it comes to her. She doesn't like the type of relationship Cynthia and Kenya have, so she insults Cynthia while talking S about Kenya. Poor Lanithia, press should be the name of her boutique. Before my good sis Maria kept it real saying, I love Nini, but we all know her dislike comes from the closeness Kenya and Cynthia had. What do you guys feel is Nini's real issue with Kenya right now? Do you feel like these Housewives fans are onto something? And as if this moment wasn't messy enough, Nene followed up with a lot of low blows. Too bad your husband don't like you. Yeah, and you like yours? You. you like yours? Stop! 
and she really just let Kenya have it, leaving everyone at a loss for words. First of all, I gotta say every single time, Nini finally has a moment where I start to have some compassion for her, like this part in episode 18, where she and Portia have this heart to heart. You and I miss you so much. Thank you. I miss you so much, Nini. Thank you. By the end of the doggone episode, Nini just does something else that just has me right back where I'm just like, this is too negative for the show. Every time I see her, I'm gonna read her down. Cause you ain't gonna never be able to punk me. Kenya, fake contacts, okay? Wig, okay? Yes, Nini was way out of line for all of this energy that she brought to the Ruins party. And I know that some of you guys are having a fill day right now. But when she called Kenya an attention bloop, I was like, and that oop. <laughs> because if y'all remember, this is the exact term that the blogs alleged that Mark called Kenya on the night of the event that led to their divorce announcement the next day. I was personally so annoyed that this rumor appeared to be untrue up until this moment. Now, this is just a theory, but I wonder if Bravo cut the part of the episode where Mark was allegedly caught calling his wife an attention bloop on purpose, or if they're saving this juicy audio for the reunion. Even still, I do not think that it was a coincidence that Nini used this exact phrase in her screaming match with Kimmy. You better be ugly. You're as ugly as you look on the inside. Outside. I you, you wish me. Either way, it looks like we're going to have to wait until next week to see just how bad things actually got. Because Bravo definitely hit us with a nasty to be continued. And speaking of the reunion, if you missed my last video, I've got some pretty bad news about that before we wrap things up here. Every year around this time, Real Housewives of Atlanta typically tapes its annual all-day reunion marathon with all of its cast members at the iconic Biltmore in Midtown Atlanta. But if you've been paying attention, you already know that basically the whole world is shutting down right now to keep everyone at home in an attempt to keep as many people as possible safe. But when reports started circulating that our reunion was at risk, I was in complete denial. I mean, we've been hearing about all types of live TV shows like Wendy Williams, Ellen DeGeneres, and even Watch What Happens Live going on hiatus while the block is hot. But I just did not ever even think about the fact that it was even this serious for them to cancel the Real Housewives of Atlanta season 12 reunion? I mean, let's be real, our girls are probably already together anyway, sitting down at the OLG doing nothing but gossiping, right? See, that's me still being in denial, y'all. Well, I am sad to report that Andy Cohen confirmed on Twitter that the filming for the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion show has been axed for now. When do you... When do it become... <laughs> A Housewives fan took to Twitter on Friday, just as upset as I am tweeting, Andy, is the Atlanta reunion canceled or just postponed? Question mark. I gotta know! Exclamation point. And Andy Cohen actually tweeted back saying, postponed! Exclamation point. OMG, we all need something to look forward to. And you will get it! Exclamation point. Yes, y'all already know that my phone started blowing up immediately. So I had to call the plug and get confirmation. And when I did, I was so devastated because I had not seen Andy's tweet yet. And at the time, people were saying that the reunion was canceled, not postponed. Trust, you will be dealt with. Period, period. But Norris on Twitter put a smile back on my face talking about, this is how the next Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion is about to look with the crying face emoji. Andy's gonna host it on Zoom with this dead face emoji. <laughs> and another Housewives fan tweeted, Andy, so y'all can't do the reunion via Skype or something? Question mark, question mark. And Andy tweeted back, we considered it for a second, but figured it would stink, exclamation point. And honestly, I don't know what's worst. Living in a world where something like this could even happen? Or living in a world where something like Rona V could happen? <laughs> I am just kidding. I obviously understand how serious this Rona situation really is, 
And I really had to sit back and think about how many people it really takes to actually make a real Housewives of Atlanta reunion taping happen. And I thought about that they're probably flying from all over the country or all over the world to make this happen. So after that, I really just started to like calm down and just <laughs> you know, let go of my expectations, really. And interestingly enough, I found out that it takes more than 250 people to pull off the whole production process for one day of filming for the reunion. So now it all really makes sense. Here's the thing, though. I understand that Andy is saying with confidence that the reunion is definitely not canceled and he's assuring fans that the taping is only postponed for now. But the reality is that everything is up in the air right now and nobody can offer any type of guarantees right now about nothing. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Yes, if you missed this full video, check it out after this one because I spilled a juicy Justin Diego theory about how I am so shook because Andy's statement sounds cool and all about just postponing the reunion and not canceling it. But the reality is everything is up in the air and there is a chance that we may not get a reunion this year at all. <laughs> what a mess. We can all agree that this heartfelt moment between Portia Williams and Nene Leakes on episode 18 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, was a long time coming. I love you and I miss you so much. Thank you. I miss you so much, Nene. Thank you. But if you're serious about your housewife's tea, you know that this moment of sisterhood is in stark contrast to where the two of them were this same time last year. First of all, let's get you together, Miss P. Let's not forget, sis, that you done been in about five fights over here, sis. Let's not forget. Cynthia and you were on the boat, and Cynthia had to kick you. Let's not forget, sis. Don't forget you jumped on Jamie at our finale a few years ago during the Christmas party. Don't forget, sis. First of all, let's be very clear. You want to get out here and pretend that I put my hands on you. Don't do that. Because if I put my hands on you, you would know it, okay? I'm scared. It's Justin Diego back with another Binge Ready video. And today, let's talk about how I just cannot get enough of this powerful moment between Portia and Nini and what this means for the future of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, before we get started sipping this tea, go ahead and like this video, click that subscribe button, and you already know you wanna hit that bell button so you officially join me and my binge watchers and are first to get updates about binge worthy videos like this. These girls are in for a treat <laughs> or a trick. If you watch Sunday night's episode, you saw how things went completely left with Nene and some of the girls on this trip. Mark is twirling right on out of the marriage, him and his nose ring. Bye, Mark. But before all this drama came through like a wrecking ball, we got to see a really beautiful moment happen between Portia Williams and Nene Leakes that helped make our guilty pleasures of watching these Housewives moments a lot less guilty. <laughs> it's been really hard without you. Yes, Portia was actually the one who decided to pull Nene aside and squash their beef. And to be honest, I found myself actually sitting here ready to cry with them. But I feel like this scene really worked because it wasn't just a surface conversation. Because both Nini and Portia came into this heart to heart ready to tell each other how their beef really affected their relationship. We've said ugly stuff to each other before. This time was extra sensitive to me because I was pregnant. So the timing of you and I having this war was like the worst possible time for me. So when I felt like you didn't care, I let go of who we were. I was so glad that Portia took this approach because it showed just how much this situation really hurt her. But at the same time, she made it very clear to Nini that her behavior was completely unacceptable. I'm not that person to not forgive somebody, but I love you to the point where it's like, I can't forgive her till she understand what happened. Yes, Portia finally opened up about her experiencing postpartum depression after having baby PJ. And if y'all think back to like the beginning of this season, we saw Portia was definitely going through something heavy. 
but I'm just so glad that she was able to explain this exactly the way she wanted to to Nini and let her know exactly how she did wrong. Going to therapy with Dennis, it makes me think about the long-term value of a relationship. The reason why I have been so hurt by Nini is because I valued our friendship. I was happy to hear Portia able to articulate herself and her complex emotions about the situation all so well. And I'm like two seconds away from calling her therapist, Miss Sherry, my self. In all seriousness, it's obvious that Portia has really done a lot of self-reflection and she is actively working on herself for real this time. And the best part is, it doesn't feel like it's for the cameras. It doesn't feel like it's for the show. It feels like it's coming from like a really authentic place. With Housewives fans and their feelings tweeting, when Portia is modeling what she has learned in therapy, I'm here for this. And Alexis was basically holding back tears too, tweeting, therapy is working for Portia. I love to see it. She really has grown from the first time she was on the show. Yes, we love to see it. And I also have to commend Nini for actually being vulnerable as well and actually sitting back and letting Portia explain her experience without interruption and without playing the victim. I know what it is to be in postpartum. So I, I feel bad that I said anything that may have hurt her. And Housewives fans were definitely feeling the vibes with one fan tweeting, this combo with Nini and Portia seems like the first time Nini actually understands how she was wrong in a situation, dot, dot, dot. Spending more time listening for understanding and less time on defending and debating. It's beautiful, exclamation point. And like I said, we love to see it. And I know that this is a serious topic, but this Oprah gif <laughs> with her crying is definitely getting snatched right up and added to my Rolodex for future videos. So you're welcome. I was so happy to see Portia and Nini finally addressing what happened last year because I honestly think that their friendship going downhill was a huge loss for the show. I want you to know as a friend, there are certain boundaries that I'm not gonna cross with you no more. And it's great that they've established healthy boundaries for moving forward. And I feel like you will also respect- I will. I will. How I wanna be treated as a friend. I will. Yes, this moment on Sunday night's episode definitely touched a lot of people. And I know that this video has been so positive up until this point, but, um, should I go there? Boy, now you know, if you go there, Nini Sands gonna light your ass up. Wait, aren't you supposed to be the good voice in my head? Why are you talking to me like that? I said what I said. You know what the people want. And if you wrap this video up, Without digging up those juicy receipts, they just gonna get the tea from somebody else. Um, no, my binge watchers are loyal. Oh, so you forgot about the other ball head boy? Silence! I've made my decision. Bring back my shady girls. This is how Portia and Nini's drama unfolded last year. And yes, I still have the receipts. This drama all started on social media and I still feel like this is one of the most pettiest social media blowups of all times. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not really talking about that because our relationship will be ruined. Okay, so Nini Leaks has been doing her thing on YouTube for a while now and she's calling it the life of Nini. Nothing. Somebody's asking what happened to you and Kenya. Nothing. She has this random show where she goes live and rants about different things going on in her life, or she takes us behind the scenes of her day to day life and it's still just as petty. To be honest though, like it's not really my style, but every now and then it's just, <laughs> it's such a train wreck that it's actually hilarious. Okay, I don't need anybody to be on my side, sis. I've been so strong like this for so long and I've been securing bags for so long, it's all good. Okay, so that's enough for you guys. Boom, bam, bye sis, okay. Thursday night, Nene got on addressing the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion trailer drama and she had a lot to say about her coworkers, especially Portia. Williams. Nini insists that she did not put her hands on Portia and she felt some type of way about Portia allegedly calling her a bald-headed b-word. First of all, let's get you together Miss P. Let's not forget sis that you done been in about five fights over here sis. Let's not forget. Cynthia you were on the boat and Cynthia had to kick you. Let's not forget sis. 
Don't forget you jumped on Jamie at our finale a few years ago during the Christmas party. Don't forget, sis. So now you want to get out here and pretend that I put my hands on you or you want to insinuate that I put my hands on you. Don't do that. Because if I put my hands on you, you would know it, okay? Oh. Uni kept calling Portia sis, y'all, and that was just so funny to me. And stop calling me sis! Now, Nini had so much to say and I ain't got time to tell you guys like everything or like include her whole video in this video. So I'll link Nini's video in the description below and I want you guys to watch it after this. But I was so shook when Nini got petty and started throwing shade at Portia's baby special on Bravo. Okay, boom, bam. Everybody please watch Portia's three episode commercial that Bravo has given her in 30 minutes three episode commercial. Congrats! I, I love it. Mwah. I love all of you girls. You guys are amazing. I am dying. Like, I can't believe she's calling this girl's show a commercial because it's just so petty and so disrespectful, but 100% NeNe. Apparently, that's what set Portia off. Friday afternoon, Portia took to Instagram with this post calling NeNe leaks out along with some receipts, captioning the post saying, this is what my so-called big sis sent me last night six days after giving birth. At Nene Leaks is so miserable and I ain't... Wait, I haven't been doing my Porsche voice. Nene Leaks is so miserable and she ain't happy for nobody. It's not a contest. I'm just living my life and being blessed. Yes, I posted this since she want to go live and speak on me yet again. Talk and about these texts, I figured I'd let them see for themselves. Hashtag fat shaming a new mom, shame on you. Hashtag non supportive, edgeless bird. Hashtag is this your queen? Ooh. <laughs> and I had to comment, like, I am shook and I'm still shook. Like, Portia. You're giving me like the new queen vibes. And let me just walk you guys through the whole text thread. Nini texts Portia apparently like a couple of nights ago saying, You lying, big fat, hungry. You know I never put my hands on you, exclamation point. Marlo, Cynthia, nor Candy can ever in all caps say that, exclamation point. You want an excuse for going in my closet without my permission so you can talk your fake on Instagram all you want but remember my house is lit with cameras exclamation point oh and don't forget who was on your side and saved your whack ass when you pulled Kenya off that sofa <laughs> not a sofa like why couldn't it be a couch don't forget nobody with you in San Fran or in Spain but me in all caps exclamation point if you got something to say say the truth because if I put my hands on you you will know at 100% emoji who child the ghetto oh and remember when you had your hair flipped over your thin ball spot exclamation point I have hair but if I don't I have enough money to buy all the wigs and extensions I won't yeah, like Nene was, <laughs> she was clearly pressed and you know, she did have the hair flip, but I want to trust and believe that the queen got some edges going on. But anyways, Portia responded saying, I'm not reading all that bullshit. <laughs> I do the same thing, you know, low key that I read it. She said, you know, well, I ain't recorded that in no studio to set you up. Kiss my ass. Ass, exclamation point how dare you make that claim i would never conspire no like that exclamation point exclamation point and in you know parentheses, parentheses she said that one better your line ass made me type so fast <laughs> anyways nini responded saying you're so full of shit. go enjoy your your one time three episode commercial <laughs> <laughs> and Portia responded, ha, you enjoy it too, boo. And Nene responded, I had 12 episodes and trust, I won't watch not one of yours, exclamation point. Too busy securing the bags. <laughs> yeah, y'all, this text message thing just kept going. And, you know, I can't read it all because I'm honestly tired. But <laughs> I do have to, like, wrap it up with Nene responding, good night, big with the busted shape. 
<laughs> and then Portia responded and said, girl, I know you and them granddaddy long legs and that box body not coming for my body. That made my night exclamation point. <laughs> and like, ooh, like social media is so petty. Like they go, they went ahead and created that visual. Now, Nirini responded saying, long pretty legs and being fine. You worry about them extra small baby ankles you rocking. Hopefully they hold up that giant body. Try dieting. You have something. <laughs> <laughs> that's something you have never been good at with the laughing emoji like I don't know like I'm sensitive about like stuff like weight and I feel like up until like this granddaddy long legs and stuff like the whole conversation was kind of funny but I feel like mm, if you my friend and you started reading me like this girl you about to be blocked with the tea. Well, it wasn't over. Nini hopped on the gram posting her own subliminals before posting text receipts as well, tagging Portia saying, this is what I sent you after you gave birth. I sent you text messages last night after I saw on social media what you said. I could have responded back on social media, but I decided to text you rather than do that. Exclamation point. I know you need viewers to tune in to your three episode commercial, which is why you're doing the most. By ankles, hashtag HBIC. So yeah, it was very important for Nini to post that because it did look like Nini was just like a hater. So I was glad to see that Nini at least did send something like congratulating her and like kind of being some sort of a friend. And it kind of started to make it seem like Nini wasn't really the bad guy and she was, you know, some sort of a victim. But Portia responded back saying, and this is why you are sick. You started with me last night and now you played the victim. It's too hard being friends with you i'm done dot 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 so enjoy being exposed dot 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 talk about that on your closet special sis Mwah. yes this whole beef between portia and nini got so petty and messy and at first i really felt bad about even going back into the archives but now i'm definitely glad i did now that you know exactly what went down Hopefully you can see that these two making up is definitely such a big deal. And I see why Kenya is mad about it. After hearing everything that I've heard Portia say about Nene, I think she would just be the last person to fall for Nene's BS. Yes, clearly Kenya did not like this reconciliation and I'm definitely sure that Portia has been it a lot with her in the past about Nene since they were both at odds with Nene. But I hope that Kenya is smart enough to not let this send her back into a nasty war with Portia all over again. After Sunday's episode, Kenya took to the gram slamming Portia and Nini's friendship and teasing more reunion drama. Captioning the post saying, RHOA season 12 reunion will be epic! Exclamation point. The truth about all these fake relationships will be exposed. Secrets have been kept way too long. All the snakes' heads will be cut off. My receipts are ready. Hashtag RHOA Season 12 Reunion. And I'm just giving her the face palm emoji right now because I tried to protect the queen, but Kenya was getting so much backlash after this episode that my wig started to come undone. And Mimi and Portia definitely joined in on the gram, posting captions of their own with Mimi's caption saying, Big sis, little sis is back, exclamation point. The past is the past, exclamation point. I don't care about yesterday. We are sisters today. Hashtag buy receipts. <laughs> Before Portia said, what door question mark? Big sis, little sis, through the ups and downs because real recognize real. It's all love and forgiveness with the red heart emoji. <laughs> yes, these Atlanta girls always know how to turn it. And I'm definitely glad that in an episode filled with so much drama, the show took a break from showing us good sisters to show us some good old fashioned sisterhood. Thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I've been having so much fun with these last few videos over the last few weeks and I so appreciate y'all for taking this journey with me. If you've enjoyed this binge worthy video, definitely like it and leave a comment before you head out. And I'll be sure to heart all of my favorite ones. Thanks again so much for watching. I will see y'all good sisters on the next one.